Good morning, pop culture. We are live. Yes, very much live. It is December 24th, 2018, aka Christmas Eve. And we're starting a little bit early today because we got a lot to talk about. Yes, we'll cover our morning of normal topics like Aquaman, the transgender James Bond, the bullshit Mary Sue, all of those wonderful, fun things that I know each and every one of you want me to talk about. But I'm also going to open up some of our stuff on the P.O. Box, or excuse me, from the P.O. Box, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Now, I'm not waiting till 200 viewers because I know it's a holiday technically for a lot of city or federal workers. So what I'm going to do is, um, you know, just start now. And we're going to open up some stuff. We're going to talk about news. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's our little Christmas party, if you will. Now, I've been sitting on a lot of this stuff from the P.O. Box for a couple of weeks now. My house is like a fucking jungle of boxes, but hey, I can't complain. It's awesome. But I wanted to do something Christmas-like. So let's not wait any longer, and let's open up a few of these cool things. So this one comes from our buddy Realities Frank. I don't want to dox him, so I'm not going to show the front with his address, but it's a nice, cool mailer. And let's see what uh, Realities Frank sent world-class bullshitters. By the way, folks, we have a P.O. Box, and that is what we did. It's uh, P.O. Box 5069, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45205. So our buddy, Realities Frank, sent us uh, looks like an old video game case from a blockbuster. Let's see what we got. We got some napkins, and we got Captain Power Volume 1 <laughs> on DVD. So thank you, Realities Frank. Oh, Thunder Robots, I got tons and tons of packages. I could do a whole show just on packages. This is Tales from the P.O. Box Episode 2. So there we go. We have Captain Power Volume 1. I have no clue what Captain Power is. So Reality's Frank, I'm going to have to check that out uh, as soon as I get the chance. Probably closer to the new year because tonight I got a Christmas party. Tomorrow's Christmas where we're going out at, uh, so to our uh, relative's house, excuse me. And then my mom and I have plans the day after, and then I'm leaving for Michigan. But shout out to Reality's Frank. Uh, thank you very much. Now let's open a box. So let's see. Okay, let's see. Ooh, this one comes with a letter. Oh, shit. Okay, this is cool. Oh, oh my God. Uh, well, you know, we always talk about commencement, the end of one thing, the beginning of another. There's the end of one thing. The last Indiana Jones figure I never had. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jonathan Hurst. So we got a letter, an awesome letter on Indiana Jones letterhead. Let's see if you guys can see that. There we go. And I'll read you the letter. Dear Jeff. I'm not sure how many times or how many lines of toys they released based on the original movies, but hopefully this edition of Elsa will help you complete your collection. It did. <laughs> and thanks again for all for you and all the bullshitters. Listening to you guys feels like hanging out with family. Best wishes, Jonathan Hurst. <laughs> P.S. Don't let Elsa take the girl past the temple seal. <laughs> oh my God, I love it so much. Jonathan Hurst, thank you so, so much. Uh, I think you and I are relatively close, so I guess we should hang out and watch Indiana Jones one day. <laughs> but this is awesome. Thank you. Yes, this is it. Uh, that's the last Indiana Jones figure I have never, ever seen in public, but now I own it. So thank you very much, Jonathan Hurst. Uh, the rest of them are open, but I'm going to keep Elsa in the box as sort of a uh, you know, a reminder. But thank you. Oh, man, this is, this is awesome. i got to look at this all day. Mm. See, here's the rest of the wave. Uh, sorry, everything's backwards on my screen. Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones, Temple Knight, Colonel Vogel, Henry Jones, and basic Indiana Jones. I got all those. I never found Elsa Schneider. So uh, thank you very much to Jonathan Hurst. Liquor Jim, thank you very much. That's definitely porn. Well, I am an adult, and so is Reality's Frank. So um, thanks, Reality's Frank. <laughs> uh, Alpha Terra Nima, thank you very much. Did you get the real action heroes Indy? I have not, but uh, one day I will. I don't really love the face sculpt, but it's Indiana Jones, so I feel like I kind of got to own it. Okay, so what else do we got from the P.O. Box? We got something from our friend Jason in Texas. So, again, this is the back. I don't really want to show anybody's personal information. The last intention I have is to dock somebody. Is there a mirrored Jeff? Well, there is now. 2019 will be the year of the Jeff. 
even though I think every day is my uh, year. What do we got in here? It, ooh. <laughs> cool. We got a small record. What is this? A, is this called, not a 45, but it's Miami Vice. You belong to the city, Glenn Fry. Oh, this is awesome. Thank you so much, Jason. That's where it came from, because he sent a couple of things. Yeah. Our buddy Jason out of Texas. This is awesome. This is going on my Miami Vice shelf. So if you guys don't know, I have a small portion of my office dedicated to Miami Vice, and I do not own this. So this is awesome, and this is definitely going up there on the shelf. So thank you, Jason. My mom's like, what's in these boxes? I'm like, I don't know. I got to open them on camera. She now knows. <laughs> She's, she'll now know. Uh, let's see. This one comes from Missouri. Uh, the name isn't on the front. And after we open this one up, we're going to talk about Aquaman for a minute while I open up a few more. So let's see what we got from the P.O. box. I am the collector. Oh, cool. <laughs> King of the Hill soundtrack. This is awesome. Let's see. Music from and inspired by the TV series King of the Hill. I love King of the Hill. I watch it almost every single day. What do you guys, if you guys ever wonder what I do off air, after the show, it's I usually put on an episode of King of the Hill and I start to get the show ready to go on Podbean and all the other formats. So <laughs> there you go, King of the Hill. Let's take a look on the inside. We got Lady Bird on the disc. And we got this really, really awesome. Uh, let's see, what else do they got here for King of the Hill? I'm a sucker for King of the Hill merchandise. So here's the booklet. And let's see what we got. Oh, it's a fold out poster. Of the Hill family, Cotton's fa or, well, Cotton is a Hill, Con's family, and then John Redcorn, Dale, Nancy, Bill Boomhauer, and Joseph. Oh, cool. So this is going to go up on my collection as well. I just watched the episode where Con's father-in-law steals his karaoke song. Uh, there's got to be a morning after. <laughs> Dimaj and I, thank you very much. Merry Christmas you to you and your family. Just got here, so I don't know if you mentioned it, but check out the Star Wars Theory Vader fan film. It's not bad. Oh, I plan on watching it and doing a review. I But our buddy Sketch Therapy likes to take care of our fan films. So when Sketch Therapy um, gets back with me in the new year, he wants to set up more fan films, and I'm going to request that we watch that one on the fan film Darth Vader, or whatever it's called, Darth Vader. Um, I support independent projects, obviously, and I want to see it succeed. So shout out to Star Wars Theory. Congratulations. I think it got like a million views already. Believe me, I know what it's like to get a million views on a single video. <coughs> Humble brag, Ethan Jeremy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but yeah, this King of the Hill album is awesome. So um, there's no note that came with it, or else I'd read that on air. I do love the notes. I like to hear what you guys think. Uh, but man, King of the Hill, I'm going to burn that to my computer and put it on my phone. <laughs> so thank you to everyone who's watching. Uh, we got a postcard here from Nashville, Tennessee. Let's see what it says. It says, to Jeff and the World Class Bullshitters, thank you for providing excellent content that is ideal for working and lurking. Keep passionately working towards your goals. Liquor Jim. Liquor Jim, thank you very, very much. Um, last time, somehow your postcard magically disappeared. I apologize, but I made sure that this one was on the top of the heap so nothing would happen to it. So there you go. Liquor Jim, thank you very much, and Merry Christmas, my friend. Logan Michael is breaking my heart with this super chat. Aquaman's only problem was the soy music. So let me start talking about Aquaman because you saw the tweet, well, if you follow us on Twitter, that I said it's visually the best mo uh, movie I've ever seen and that Marvel has some true competition. Hashtag 2018 achievement. So I don't think it's better than Avengers. I don't think it's better than a lot of MCU movies. But I'm putting it out there that Aquaman is my favorite DCEU film. It's the best DC film since The Dark Knight Rises. I like it more than a good chunk of a lot of Marvel movies. And for everyone that's on the internet wanting to say it's a, oh, it's a message about, you know, respecting the seas. No, what actually is said in the movie is Aquaman goes, we're not perfect. And that's it. They don't go on and on and on about cleaning up the seas and all this other bullshit. It's mentioned once. Aquaman's a badass hero. He's not perfect. He, he operates in that gray area and he's a reluctant hero. And in many ways, he's a lot like a Luke Skywalker. It's this, this is the hero's journey, but for 2018. Our buddies over at Midnight's Edge said that the hero's journey doesn't really matter. But I disagreed, 
and Aquaman proves the point that the hero's journey is still alive and kicking, and it works. And Mira doesn't upstage Aquaman. It's no SJW NPC agenda like Wonder Woman. It's funny how Marvel slowly veers into that territory. DC makes sure that they stay away from it. Mira was cool. She was effective. They weren't afraid to show some uh, Amber Heard, if you know what I mean. Nicole Kidman was great. Tamara Morrison was great. Patrick Wilson was awesome. And he's one of those villains where you can understand why he does what he does. He's power hungry. He feels betrayed. Um, I don't want to spoil anything for you. So if you guys have specific questions, make sure you let me know. But I thought the music kicked ass because it felt like a traditional score that I always am going on about. Bring back traditional scores. Bring back traditional scores. Well, they have that. And they also have this really cool synth music as they go into um, Atlantis. It looks like straight out of Tron Legacy, Atlantis does. It sounds like Tron Legacy music. It was fun. I had no complaints about that. The visuals, it was probably the best looking movie I've ever seen on the big screen. It looked awesome. And they did some really cool camera angles. And there's this one, let me explain it to you. So look at my hand. Imagine above my hand is the horizon and underneath is where the water goes. And I know this is a really Kmart equivalent, but it shows Aquaman swim underneath and it goes down like this is getting chased and the lights all red and he's being chased by stuff and then it keeps showing the horizon of the storm it is awesome if you guys have a chance to go check it out go check it out i strongly recommend it and had i watched it before our year-end review it would have made my top three so if you guys liked it awesome if you guys didn't like it awesome too remember folks we are a community but we don't have to agree on everything and that's fine if we disagree or if we agree on everything i'm not looking for validation of my opinion and um i'm just letting you know what i thought i couldn't have been happier with aquaman so um check it out check it out okay so what else do we got here this one comes from echo base outfitters from texas that's a website it's a dot com I'm still not going to give um, their address because I don't think that you know happened, but this is cool. It's a nice mailer. Yeah, I thought DC nailed it as well. Um, who said it? Daniel Brown. Or wait, no, Daniel Brown didn't like it. I don't think it turned into a date movie. I thought once he jumped out of the airplane, it turned into Uncharted the movie, and I love Uncharted the video game, so I was happy with it. I uh, it's very traditional. If you like your old school stories and stuff, then I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Oh, cool. We got a stack of bumper stickers. Holy shit. I needed a new bumper sticker. So this comes at the perfect time. So let's see here. We got, hey guys, I cut our decal orders off big rolls of material. So I'm always filling leftover space with random stuff. It's not to waste material. Here's a few of my ever growing extra piles. So it may be a pain to remove from the backing because they've been sitting for a while, but they'll be fine once they're applied. Hope you enjoy. Great work with the channel, by the way. I've been watching since the early videos of the Star Wars toys. There's a lot of us out here, out here who feel the same way about what's happening. Brandon, TK32917. Well, Brandon, thank you very much, my friend. I'm glad that you guys are out there and you let me know what's up. You know, we get tons and tons of these websites that want to tell... This is Wild Stallions. This is going on my fucking car. Wild Stallions. Yes, I love Bill and Ted. Uh, but there are a lot of people out there who try to, you know, belittle us and take us down. But you guys always prove that that's not the case. <laughs> Slurm. Okay, well, that's a Futurama, right? We got... Oh, my God. NPC stickers. <laughs> I, these are And these are, like, shiny, too. Reflective. I feel like I need to troll some people. I'm going to put this on Dion's car. How's that sound? How's that sound? <laughs> so we'll do that. We got our never forget stickers. I will never forget. <laughs> She'll make 0.5 past light speed. That might have to go on my other car. Uh, Rebel. I like that one a lot. Punch it, Chewy. Hey, Joel, if you're out there watching, tell me which one you want, and I'll send you one of these. Uh, let's see. We got fire. These are elements from something. You guys have to tell me. Is this from a game? Come on. Focus. Focus. There we go. Sorry, this webcam is kind of shitty. Let's see. We had uh, two Super Chats roll in while I'm looking at these. Uh, boycott an SJW story. I should get that tattooed across my chest. I feel like that's a, uh, a good way to make fun of those people. Han shot first. I love it. Nope, Star Wars. Nope, Star Wars. Nope, Star Wars. <laughs> oh, Kendo, I know you're jealous. You'll float too. Oh, it's like Doctor Who font. I love it. Okay, that's going on my car because I closed the show out with that. Be excellent to each other. Boom. 
Got a footprint. I'm not sure exactly what game that is. Those are from Magic the Gathering earlier. Okay. We got another Death Star. I think this is Skyrim. And then another Han shot first. So to Brandon, our friend from EchoBaseOutfitters.com, thank you very much. Um, I love stickers. I love putting stuff on my car. I have a Spider-Man, a Batman, and a couple other stickers. So be excellent to each other is definitely going on my car for sure, as well as a few other things. I think it's time for me to retire the old Spider-Man sticker. He's been around. Wait, I think there's one more. Wait, there's a few more in here. Shit. What else we got? Oh, business cards. There we go. Ooh, they're rounded just like ours. Let's see. Is there anything on the back? Yeah. So, guys, if you're looking for vinyl cut decals and graphics, check out echobaseoutfitters.com. And if, Brandon, you want to message us or send out a tweet, we'll gladly retweet it for you, put you on our Facebook page, because we would like to see you succeed, man. So thank you very much, and uh, Merry Christmas. So let's see what else we got. Let's put these away. Uh, my office is not the most organized, so that is why I never really am on camera, because i got to get my shit fixed up. Right here is my PlayStation, and this is the TV that you're... Uh, I'm actually streaming this on the TV so I can get a better light source. So, okay, the stickers are put away. Let's see what you guys are saying over here. So Demogeni says, going to see Aquaman after work. We'll have a vid up later. Well, Demogeni, I'm going to watch it to, let, to know what you think of the movie. I was pumped. Dan was pumped. I had a great time. I had no expectations going in. I thought Black Manta was great. And I don't mean the actor was like that amazing, but I thought the character looked awesome. Um, I like Black Manta. The powers were cool. The fight scenes were cool. The cinematography was beautiful. Aquaman was a big hit for me. Uh, let's see. David M., thank you very, very much. Uh, I'm stuck at work today, so glad you are on giving you a little extra via chat as I've closed my Patreon account and don't want to lose out. Merry Christmas, and here's to a bigger year for the channel next year. Well, I'm going to make sure we have a bigger channel, a uh, bigger year next year for the channel. But I have to say, guys, last year we were at about 8,000 at this time. We're at 77,000. I know it looks like we're a few numbers off, but there's a lot of secret subscribers. So uh, we're at 77,000. That's a pretty damn awesome year. And my life has been mostly this channel, but I couldn't ask for anything more. So here we got a letter addressed to the council. And let's see, this. <laughs> the post office made a mistake. Um, They put, oh shit, okay, it's got this lady's name. I don't want to show it, but they put the council with our PO box. And I'm thinking it's the high council, right? No, it is a membership for the West Price Hill Community Council application. So a, I got a check for $10, and it's addressed to something else. So I'm going to have to take this back to the post office. Uh, I'm not going to show that woman's check on the internet because that would be terrible, but I will make sure I give it back to them to return to sender. I would feel really terrible if uh, that lady's information got leaked out. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of hope for Shazam Marty McFly. I'm hoping Shazam kicks ass. For me personally, the trailer got my attention, and I thought that, um, you know, DC's on the right direction. So we got a letter from our buddy, uh, Kevin in New Jersey. It says, Dear Jeff, a.k.a. Mr. Shitter, a.k.a. Muff Daddy, hope this letter finds you well. That said, I was introduced to your channel with the Star Wars is a Dead Brand video from 2017, the merchandise rots in stores. And I've been tuning in daily to your channel since spring of 2018. In fact, I remember being on vacation in Maine back in August, seeing your toy graveyard upload and having to watch immediately when I got back where I was staying. Thank you very much. It's great to be able to tune in to a backlog of episodes ranging from the High Council or Thursday Night Show to help me get through my morning commute, just to get to work on time for a new episode of Good Morning Pop Culture. Your voice has made me feel less of an outcast, especially when it comes to you and the guys, reception of The Force Awakens, and introduced me to classic film franchises. Hearing the passion you have for Back to the Future made me revisit it, and I'm now a proud owner of the Blu-ray trilogy set. Ooh, th those words make me happy, and I'm sorry for the out-of-focus coffee shot, guys, but this letter is awesome. As of now, I have been more of a lurker and not someone who is active on live stream chats, Patreon, or the fan page, so I wanted to send you this letter to share my voice and enjoyment of your show. I'd be down to purchase any WCBS merchandise, and made sure, and I made sure to back ceiling solo when I caught wind of it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoy the gift, and Merry Christmas to you, your friends, and family. Thank you for being a voice in the community, and here's to an upcoming new year with world-class bullshitters. With thanks, Kevin. P.S. I hear you're on Metal Gear Solid Craze, and that's awesome. Snake Eater is one of my personal favorites. 
Speaking of games, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Definitely Ocarina of Time. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Also, check out Star Wars Jedi Knights game if you haven't. P.S. If you are ever in the New York area, I'd love to know if there's a WCBS meetup. I'd love to come up for that. Well, Kevin, I have some good news. I hope you're listening. There is going to be one. I will be in New York with Dan and Dion and Joel and maybe Cecil uh, in April. I will let you guys know. We'll have like a meetup at Cat's Deli or just some place that you guys would like to meet up because I will definitely be there. I'm going for WrestleMania. I have my tickets. Everything's taken care of. But um, yeah, I'll let you know for sure. PPPS, maybe Rhodey's a scroll since he was originally played by Terrence Howard in Iron Man and replaced by Don Cheadle in every other MCU movie. Kevin, if that happens, I'm going to send you some awesome world-class bullshit or stuff. <laughs> Real quick, thank you very much, Kevin. I love these letters. It makes me feel like we're... Um, I always thought of us as like a bizarre radio version of like a Pee Wee's Playhouse, our channel. We always have weird different things to do. We never want to be uh, monotonous and boring. Now, Kevin, you mentioned about getting world-class bullshitters merchandise. I'm busy with the comic and all these other things, but I want to let you guys know that is something I'm doing in the new year. I have taken channel money and I've bought equipment to make shirts and do these things. I know the other guys go crypto fashion and all that stuff, and that is awesome. That is well and good. But I want to do it, honestly, just because you would uh, make more money that way. And my mom wants to help me out. She wants to get involved with the channel. So next year, we'll have T-shirts and posters and stickers and all that stuff. Hell, I may uh, go get stickers printed from a third-party company and ask them to, uh, you know, ship us some out. <coughs> Brandon. So let's see. we got a box right here. That's a it's an Amazon box. Hold on. First off, Admiral Tiberius, thank you very much. Jeff, Marvel is covering up Captain Marvel in full body suits. Meanwhile, DC is showing Mira and Wonder Woman to show a little skin. DC is doing right. Yes. Um, I'm a guy like a lot of you that listen to the show. I am not shy to say I think Amber Heard's good looking and I liked her costume, if you know what I mean. Same with Gal Gadot. Beautiful women. Um, you know, Marvel used to go that route, the little bit of TNA with... Um, the MCU earlier on. They definitely had, or they weren't afraid to show that with Scarlett Johansson. Um, Marvel has gone full, full, full um, in the opposite direction. It's not to offend, but the worldwide audience, maybe Aquaman's not hitting it huge in America with only a $73 million opening, but it's almost made $500 million worldwide already. So remember, when we talk about The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi and all these other movies that we talk about, we do discuss the worldwide box office here on the channel. I'm not twisting it to make Aquaman sound better. When we talk about Solo's flop, it's a flop worldwide. When we talk about how The Last Jedi is down almost $750 million, that's worldwide box office. So that does fall into line with how we always discuss our, um, you know, our shows, our movie box offices. So this comes from Remember That Collectibles all the way from Oak Grove, Louisiana. So let's see what's inside this nicely wrapped thing. Oh my god <laughs> you know guys in life sometimes you want something so much and you can't find it and then you start a youtube channel and you build a great community and then you get two of them <laughs> you know uh to, to both our friend uh jonathan hurst as well as remember that collectibles dr elsa schneider has a home both dr elsa schneiders she has a twin sister who's also named Elsa Schneider. <laughs> so I'd like to thank Remember That Collectibles down in Louisiana. I wish we would have known where you were in terms, or excuse me, in regard to New Orleans, because we would have stopped by. Dion and I love to go to collectible stores, comic book stores, everything when we're out of town. So guys, check out that place. Remember, it's called Remember That, D-A-T, Collectibles. And I'd like to thank them personally for sending us Elsa Schneider. Now I have an excuse to open one and keep one in the box, much like my Temple of Doom figures. <laughs> this is awesome. So thank you so much. Uh, Chris Wicks, thank you very much. Merry Christmas to you, your mom, the BSers, and the subs. My gift is not addressed to you, but I've already been given to her already. I'm off to Midnight Mass, but now check back later. Cheers, mate. Well, Chris Wicks, thank you very much for everything you do. That is a name we see on the channel all the time. Enjoy your midnight mass down in Australia and uh, enjoy Christmas before everybody else. Opinionated Junkie, thank you very much. Why is Bumblebee doing bad? Because the other Transformers movies have really rubbed people the wrong way. And, uh, you know, I think that's it. Even though this, the designs look right, they should have been doing this in 2007. 
because the wave of 80s nostalgia and Transformers and G.I. Joe and all that hype is kind of over with. Uh, one of our listeners, um, your name is Stephen. I won't read all your information out. Uh, you sent it via UPS to us, and I got a little card from UPS that says I have to go there and pick it up, but they're closed. They were closed on Saturday, and obviously I can't make it there today. So I will be checking that out, and you will be added to our um, 2019 Tales from the P.O. Box, the first one. But I'd like to thank you for sending whatever you sent in advance. Okay, so we got something here from uh, A&D Publishing out of uh, what is it? Schenectady, New York. Cool. Thank you very much. Nice little package. Let's see what we got inside. Opinionated Junkie, I have not watched Titan Season 1, but I will eventually. <laughs> Jeff, this is a bit of a meta present because your first P.O. Box video made it painfully obvious that you need a better box opening knife. So go ahead and take this. It's traditional Japanese. Uh, Higo no Kami rhymes with We Got Slow Kami to open future goodies with. Love the show. P.S. More Doomcock, please. A.D. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that is a piece of the elbow. I will do that. I will use that. I had a pair of scissors here, but I guess the scissors are going to get pushed away. So thank you very much to A and D Publishing, or AD Publishing, excuse me, and uh, I will use this. <laughs> Let's see, we got another postcard from Liquor Jim. It says, thank you for providing excellent content. It's ideal for working Lorcan. Keep passionately working towards your goals. Happy Thanksgiving. God, I am so behind. This is a happy Thanksgiving card from Liquor Jim. Liquor Jim, if you're in the chat, thank you very much. I apologize for reading your Thanksgiving card on Christmas. Uh, let's see. We got another one from Madeline Island Ice Angel from Liquor Gym again. I'll read this too. It says, was out and about driving this past weekend and found some new postcards. Really enjoying the show this week. Hollywood Jeremy has forsaken the high council. Hope he hooks you guys up with your connections to move you closer to your dreams. Liquor Gym. Liquor Gym, thank you very much. Um, I can't say too much, but I'm kind of involved a little bit with Hollywood Jeremy. I can't say any more than that. But, uh, I will. Uh, you'll you'll know soon enough. I don't want to spill the beans for Jeremy, but I'm involved. I'm involved. So let's see. We got a Christmas card here. This one comes from Tippy Tail McKitty. WCBS. Hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> he sent a buck. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tippy Tail McKitty. I appreciate that. Uh, I hope you got your cat drawing eventually that I sent you. Uh, thank you very much for the Christmas dollar. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. Uh, what do I think about Episode Nine being a year after The Last Jedi? Well, uh, anything to, um, you know, get the taste out of our mouth. Because remember, Episode Seven and Eight are essentially weekend at Kylo's. It's a bunch of stuff that happens over a short period of time, and it makes me not too happy about um you know anything it just all takes place really quickly so here we got a christmas card another one three angels very precious um this was my normal mail this was for my grandma so let's ignore that one there you go you can see the card again but yeah this was sent to me for my grandma i must have mixed that up with the regular mail so uh yay me all right um again our buddy liquor jim sent in a postcard it says, thank you for providing excellent content. Uh, this is ideal for work and work. Keep passionately working towards your goals. Liquor Jim. I will, Liquor Jim. I will always be working towards my goals. Um, one thing for 2019 is to move this PlayStation out of this office. Yes, yeah, Spider-Man was fun. It was great to do Red Dead Redemption streams, but no more. No more. I got to get making. I can't do three videos a day. The way I produce videos, just it ain't going to happen. But I will get to do uh, a lot. I'm going to get us to 100,000 before Star Wars Celebration. My Culture War series was definitely going to be awesome. Uh, my thoughts on Chris Rock. Um, I like Chris Rock as a comedian and as an actor. I'm a fan. I don't... Did he do something recently? Did he say something uh, politically charged? Because overall, I think he's funny, and I've liked his previous work. He has my one of my favorite lines that I've said to people. Uh, what do I look for in a relationship? Three Fs. What do the three Fs stand for? Feed me, fuck me, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I love Chris Rock at times. 
Okay, it's funny that I got a message about Chris Rock as I open this. This is awesome. So this comes from our buddy uh, Jason in Texas again. Thank you very much, Jason. Fucking Richard Pryor album, live in concert. <laughs> this is awesome. That was the perfect time. Seriously, that was not a setup. As I'm reading about Chris Rock, I, uh, boom. This is cool, and there's no letter to go with it. But thank you, uh, Jason. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this with me to Michigan because Dion's big into records or LPs or albums or whatever, how you want to uh, address them. And we're going to go listen to this while we're drinking on New Year's. So, Jason, uh, thanks for the entertainment. We are going to have a good time listening to Richard Pryor. Wanted Richard Pryor in concert. Now, let's see. It's a double LP, and that's one half of it. Richard Pryor, the greatest stand-up of all time, him and George Carlin. And then we got... Another side, excuse me, as Richard Pryor, <laughs> a man who inspired so many stand-up comedians. I'm going to have a good time. So thank you very much, Jason. I know, right? People are like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, Kendo. What's up? Uh, Dimaj and I, sorry for uh, jumping over your super chat for a minute. I uh, saw BB Saturday. Wasn't that bad. Tagged you in a post. Are you talking about uh, Bumblebee? I didn't think it looked offensively bad. It's weird how John Cena is now an actor after he talked so much shit to The Rock. And now he wants to, you know, do what he does. Well, John, you'll never do what The Rock does because The Rock is better. Okay, let's see. We got a lot more. <laughs> let's see what's in the, uh, the big boxes. I can't show these on camera because they're giant. So now this one. I took my mom to the P.O. box with me on Saturday because I was also going to Costco to pick up our... Uh, I had to get a cake. I told my I told you guys I'm helping my grandma plan Christmas this year. And so I had to go buy this cake and a couple other things. And so when I went to the P.O. box, we got this box from our friend Pete. I, uh, he's here, uh, hopefully in the chat. And um, it came in a baby wipes box. So my mom goes, oh, somebody sent you baby wipes. And she was just joking. But for a moment, I went, no, mom, nobody sent me baby wipes. Now, this is a box with something that popped up in the back. Oh my God, cool. So this isn't all that's in the box. First off, it's a copy of WCW NWO Revenge, which is awesome because as a kid, my mom bought me this game and I took it back because I said it wasn't GoldenEye. <laughs> so as an adult, I've wanted this game and now I have it. So thank you very much. Uh, Opinionated Junkie says, comic book cast and Cena should play Thing or Nuke. Uh, there was already a Nuke in the MCU and I thought he was pretty good. I don't hate John Cena, especially as an actor, but I don't think he should be playing all this stuff. Oh, I think I know what we got here. Hold on. <laughs> all right. So our buddy Pete sent in something awesome. Fucking Nintendo 64. <laughs> A controller. <laughs> A memory card. <laughs> Hold on, we got letters. We're going to read those. And a random white box. So let's see what's in this random white box. <laughs> How do I feel about Endgame being possibly three hours long? Uh, even though I'm on an Aquaman high, I loved every Avengers movie, even though Age of Ultron is less than amazing when I go back to watch it. So I'm ready. Like I said, folks, just because I loved Aquaman doesn't mean I dislike the MCU. I've enjoyed what the MCU's put out. It's on record. I can't go back. Black Panther, a little preachy. Still not a bad film. I think I gave it a seven back in February. And what do we got in this white box? It looks like a cake box. We got... Oh, cool. We got the cords. So we have a community, a channel, Nintendo 64, which is awesome. So thank you very much to our buddy Pete. And hold on. There's more. Let's see. Pete sent us some stickers that says hashtag team ratings in the NWO font. We got some signed cards from Pete Daddy Dalla. Oh, they're all signed to us. Dion, stay away from the equine. <laughs> Jeff, you're freaking awesome. Thank you very much, Pete. Kendo, you're one of the highlights of the Appalachians. <laughs> And Nick, keep these guys in line. <laughs> this is awesome. And then we got another envelope that says Mr. Jeff Hicks, a.k.a. the ruler of Ohio. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we got a letter. It says, Jeff, 
Here's a little something just because it works, and I've had three of them. So I figured, who doesn't want one of these? With probably the second coolest wrestling game that featured one of the deepest rosters. Also included in this shipment are four personally autographed trading cards from my pro wrestling days. One for each of the world-class bullshitters. As an added bonus, there's also four hashtag team ratings decals as well, which was one of our NWO tribute stables when I wrestled for IWE. I'll try to set you to come on my channel and talk wrestling eventually. Definitely. I can't wait. Thank you, you and the WCBS team and everyone in the fandom menace for giving our community a platform to have our dis uh, our discourage uh, regarding, excuse me, our discourses regarding the sad state of affairs in entertainment and for the forthcoming Stealing Solo. Here's to you, Dion, Kendo, and Nick, and big things in 2019. I'll stop writing or else this will end up as long as War and Peace. Merry Christmas, a.k.a. Pete <laughs> Well, to keep with the theme of your addressed package, it was too sweet. <laughs> and if you're a wrestling fan, you get that. Pete, thank you very much. I see you over on our Facebook page, especially now that you're, uh, you know, your screen name over there. I'm going to give each one of the guys a hashtag, a hashtag team rating sticker, as well as their own personally addressed cards. Now, nobody can say the N64 is not a good time. This is the official WCBS N64, which might have to go get taken to some conventions. You know, it's the right TV. We'll play in the room, Nick and Kendo. We'll play some Revenge. I got a couple extra controllers from back in my day. We'll bust that out. We'll go full WCW. Kendo, I know you're watching right now. Um, why don't we make 2019 a very pro NWO year? We'll get matching. I'll get the channel matching NWO shirts. No, I'll make us WCBS NWO shirts and we'll wear them to conventions. How's that? <laughs> How's that? Pete, thank you very, very much, my friend. And I hope you're watching this eventually. I just want you guys to know how much I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. What else we got next? Okay, well, there's still a lot. So this one comes from our friend Chris from Arlington, Texas. Let's open this one up right here. Right here. If you guys haven't played WCW NWO Revenge, it's awesome. I played it with Dan a couple months ago, and we were at a, like an arc a barcade where you can play all you want games if you buy beer. So obviously, that's like the best thing I could ever imagine. And so we were playing it. We were about to have our match end, and the system froze. So Dan and I never knew who was the better player. So now we're going to hook this up, and we're going to play and find out. When you get to a... Okay, look at Jim says, when you get to a smaller box wrapped in brown paper and a lot of tape, please don't dox the city or state. Oh, I'll make sure I don't. <laughs> hey, you know what, guys? What do they call when you win something three times in a row? A three-peat? Oh, there's a three-peat for Dr. Elsa Schneider. <laughs> oh, my God. I got three of them. She now rivals every other character except Indiana Jones for like, <laughs> of the line. I got three Dr. Elsa Schneiders. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you so much to our buddy. Uh, uh, sorry. To our buddy, Chris. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh you know, I'm not going to take her pace past the Grail Seal. <laughs> Got a hat trick. I love it. I love Dr. Elsa Schneider. She's my uh, favorite indie girl. By the way, Indiana Jones, coming 2019. We'll do a whole day for the trilogy. But this weekend, I was on the R-rated horror channel. Uh, Josh is the host. He's a friend of our channels. Nick is over there all the time. But I was invited on to do an Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom commentary on Saturday night. So I went. I had a great time. And... Um, I hope you guys go check that out when it goes live. Um, I'm all about supporting other community creators or creators in our community. And, um, you know, Josh is a great dude. He's smart. You've heard Josh before. He was on our um, Halloween stream. He popped up for the movie Halloween, and we discussed the 2018 version and how I was disappointed and how he was disappointed. So it was nice to have a fellow uh, YouTuber who was, you know, that didn't drink too heavily into the Kool-Aid of Halloween. So let's see. This one doesn't have a name on it it just comes from minnesota so thank you very much minnesota so let's see what we got here it's a it's a box obviously and it is let's see it says it's oh shit uh, let's see it says paul peterson smash up expansion okay that 70s expansion 
So we got uh, Dirty Harry, Burt Reynolds, Travolta, and some lady. I don't even know what this is, but let's open it up and find out. Let's see, it's taped, so I got to use that little, what does it mean? A katana? It means Japanese sword. That's a reference for like three people. So if you understand that, shout out to you. There goes my grandma's Christmas card. And let's see what we got in here. So, oh wait, no, it's not. That was just the box. So we got a card, and uh, it's this on the inside. So, okay, WCBS show. Let's check this out. EBS, Keeper of the Rose Tico figures, World Class Bullshitters, Keeper of the Elsa Schneider figures. So this one is uh, to Jeff and Mama Hicks, <laughs> and it comes from Minnesota, and it comes with a card. And let's see, what does the card say? Uh, let's see. Dear Jeff, Merry Christmas to you, your family, and your viewers. You, Dion, and Nick, and Kendo brought a lot of joy to the world this year. I look forward to 2019 and beyond. Wishing the four of you a happy and safe holiday season. I'd like to share some of the other things that brought me joy this year. I hope you enjoy the movies as much as I did. The card game is a is new as of November and a ton of fun. Most game stores are hosting game days right now, perhaps even Rock and Rooster. I've included enough for you and a friend to get started. Rules can be found at fantasyfightgames.com. All right. If you want to share this card on camera, feel free. It was made by a retired husband and wife in Washington, Wisconsin, Washburn, Wisconsin. Peace and blessings, Liquor Jim. That's a very nice card. That is raised glitter. This is something my mom would love. She's into cards and art and all that stuff. I think I inherited that interest in art from her. So that's our card. Let's see what we got here. So... First off, we got a card game. Dion, we might have something to do before we start drinking. We got Keyforge. And we got, uh, what is this one? It's Keyforge again. There's something in here? Oh, these look like they've been taped shut intentionally. Okay. Let's see what's inside these little boxes. Oh. Okay, so the game looks like this. It's called Keyforge. Um, Call of the Archons. A unique deck game by Richard Garfield. Contains 37 cards. Archon deck. Okay. Well, we might have to check this out. Let's see what we got here. This is fun. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up one hobby, video games, for another card games. And then, but Jeff, where's the channel? Oh, my God. I'm deep in Keyforge, guys. I'm on a campaign. Dion and I, Dion quit his job. We don't do shit with our lives anymore. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, can't get the. That's the uh, the one of the downfalls of having a giant hands is that your fingers to get the little tape part off. It takes forever. Ugh. Let's see. I mean, my dad Andre the Giant did me a disservice. Damn it, Andre. We're on a first name basis. There we go. The power of scissors. So let's check this out right here. Okay, so we got a. Snuffle Gator. These are really nicely made cards. Dust Pixie Ancient Bear. That's cool. Okay, so it's a it's a big deck of cards. I think we're going to have to check this out. We'll see if Rock and Rooster carries it. Because if Rock and Rooster carries it, I might have to go up and have some fun. Get out of the office for a little bit. And let's see. We got a movie here. Hey, The Incredibles 2 on Blu-ray. Cool. I haven't had a chance to see it in theater, so there we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to Phil's, and we're going to watch it on his giant 4K television with his $2,000 speakers. I'm here rocking an old Logitech set, but he's got you know a $2,000 Dolby Atmos setup because, because reasons. But thank you, Liquor Jim, very much for everything. Love the postcards, love the cards, love the movie. And you got me the 4K HD Blu-ray Digital Code Edition, only at Best Buy. So there's a cheap plug for Best Buy, <laughs> but thank you very much. I'm going to uh, be watching this in the new year. Maybe I'll even take it to Dion's. Yeah, I'll see. You know, what? I'll see if Dion's kids have seen this yet, and we'll take it up and watch it, and then I'll bring it back and watch it with Phil on those $2,000 speakers. So there we go. Um, what else we got? Somebody said, get the QR code off the screen. I think that's to help you find the rules of the game. So if anybody wants to play Keyforge, let me know. We'll learn about it together in the new year. 
So, oh, it was Liquor Jim that said that shit. <laughs> All right, Liquor Jim, thank you very much for everything. That's kind of a uh, harsh comment there, Kendo, but uh, maybe accurate. Who knows? <laughs> now, our friend Salvador, well, we'll get to his at the end because they're giant. And I don't mean like, oh, you know, they're just big boxes. No, these are fucking giant. So this one comes from our buddy Kevin in New Jersey again. Let's see what Kevin from New Jersey sent. Um, it's a it's a big box. I can't get it on screen, but we'll find out together what is in said box. You know what's in the box? That was going to be the original title of Tales from the PO Box, but I'm really a nerd for EC Comics, and if you don't know what EC Comics are as opposed to DC Comics, EC Comics were Tales from the Crypt and Weird Science, Vault of Horror, all that shit. Yes, the movie Weird Science is based off a comic book. Uh, go watch the movie. It says, you know, it gives a credit to EC Comics. Or, yeah, so check that out. I keep wanting to say DC naturally because I talk about, you know, Marvel and DC. But I might even go out to say that EC Comics are my favorite company overall because they never really pissed me off because they disappeared really quickly. They went on to do Mad Magazine, which got eventually bought out by the proper DC. So EC still lives on. And, you know, the uh, Comics Code Authority really screwed them because they were putting out some fairly gory, violent books back in the 50s. And um, they hold up today, but some people just couldn't handle them back then. It was a much more conservative time in entertainment. And so it's kind of disappointing that they went away the way they did. But if you guys have a chance, go check it out. All right. We got another action figure here. And no, it is not a Dr. Elsa Schneider. Let's see what it is, though. Well, I know what it is. It's awesome. I don't care what I have to ever say. Oh, my God. This is cool, and it's always fun to get one of these. What's one of these? You guys are going to love it. It's wrapped incredibly well. Um, who sent this again? Our buddy Kevin. Kevin, you send better than Big Bad Toy Store. And it's Han Solo in Best in Gear. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe I'm this happy to get a Han Solo figure in the mail. Oh, my God. I'm 30 years old. What have you accomplished, Jeff? Well, I got a really successful YouTube channel, and people send me toys. <laughs> I couldn't be happier. <laughs> so thank you very much. Oh, my God. So it's Han Solo and Bespin Gear, and it's Black Series. The face is painted incredibly well, so I'm really, really happy with that. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. it. To me, it looks so much better than the previous release. Uh, you're seeing a light reflection of Han Solo. Um, let's see. Liquor Jim says the QR code is the rest of your deck on the Keyforge app. Glad you like the gifts. Merry Christmas. Well, thank you very much. I apologize for uh, letting it be seen. I'll have to make sure to uh, register my QR code as soon as possible. Let's see. Um, you're going to troll me with a Frozen figure from, uh, or else figure from Frozen. I, you know, she'll go up on the collection. Oh man, I got Han Solo. I don't care what people say when you get a Harrison Ford Han Solo figure, it kind of takes me back to being a kid. Now, funny enough, I was going to tell some Christmas stories. See, my mom was damn cool. Still is damn cool. The thing with her is she would buy me stuff throughout the year. So Christmas was always a big deal, but some of my greatest gifts weren't necessarily Christmas gifts. A lot more were birthday gifts. And I got the original. Okay. I, let me rephrase that. The nineties version of Han Solo and Best One Gear on like a Tuesday or Wednesday night. I remember we were out somewhere. I was like, Mom, it's Han Solo in the Empire Strikes Back costume. She goes, Okay, let's get it. But Christmas ninety six, that would have been twenty two years ago, was my first Star Wars Christmas. Christmas ninety six, seven, and that was it. Those were the only two Star Wars Christmases I ever had. I still liked Star Wars, but I didn't get Christmas uh, Star Wars stuff in ninety eight. Christmas ninety six, I got the Millennium Falcon. Ninety seven, I got the Adat Walker or or all-terrain armored transport, or ATAT, -AT, depending on how you like to say it. But I got that back then. Um, I've had I have so many Star Wars toys in my collection, but now I get Black Series Han Solo, and like I said, I don't care how old I get, it's still fun to have these, to get these, to open them up, and the quality is great. Like that's why I always lament the fact that while Hasbro is losing money hand over fist on Star Wars merchandise because they have to pay a huge licensing fee, the quality of the product has gone up to a point where it's like. This is damn good. And the Japanese equivalent isn't that much better, if better at all. I mean, there is no Japanese H uh, SH Figure Arts version of Han Solo and Bespin here. And this face looks pretty damn good to me. I wish I could show it to you better on camera. But, uh, Kevin, thank you very much, man. This is a going up on the shelf. 
Um, I I might open them up. I kind of want to open them up. Should I open them up? Let's see. What do I think of the Disney toy box figures? I like them. Our buddy, the Pui, sent one to me last time the P.O. box. And that little bitty Han Solo, I always say he's here on my desk. As I clean my desk, where did I put the damn thing? He's right here. I always talk about this little mini Han Solo. Um, that wasn't bullshit. There he is right there from the Pui. So there's Han Solo, and I love it. Yeah, he doesn't have a working holster, but I still like the toy very much. I want a Harrison Ford is regarding Henry figure option. <laughs> Walking cane. We can have that. We should just make a sequel called Regarding Henry Jones. How's that? That sounds pretty cool. Okay, so this one comes from Amazon Fulfillment Center. So there's nowhere to dox. I mean, you guys can send shit to Amazon or you can buy shit from Amazon. It's up to you. But this one comes directly from the Fulfillment Center. So I wonder what was sent via Amazon to world-class bullshitters. So thank you very much to whoever sent this. Let's see what it is. Get this damn tape off. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Here we are. Listen to that lovely sound of the box ripping. This. The funny part is, I don't have any kind of garbage coming soon. But, hey, cool. I have never seen these. These are neat. So, I love Batman. You love Batman. Here's Batman and the Joker as He Man figures. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And let's see. Uh,. It says, a gift from you. Hi, Jeff. This should be package number two of three. Box number three is being mailed directly from me. Figured you'd get a laugh out of these for how ridiculous these figures are. From Salvador. All right, Salvador. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I got a little, a little post thing that tells you who it's from. So thank you very much, Salvador. Uh, we've had you on the channel. I'm going to come on your channel to talk about toys soon. So you just keep me uh, up to speed on when your schedule is and I will work out a time with you. But we got these kick-ass Batman He-Man figures. So let me take a better look at this. <laughs> Our buddy Jeremy Peerboom's probably watching this going, holy shit. So collect them all. These come from Funko. These are ridiculous, but I love them. So we got uh, Batman and the Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, Scarecrow, Aquaman, Mr. Freeze, King Shark, and the Joker. If Mr. Freeze looked like that in the movie, no one would talk shit. Everyone would forget about Arnold Schwarzenegger, and we would have a kick-ass Batman versus Mr. Freeze movie. Dude, if Batman had a sword and shield like he comes with in here, in the box, what a much different Batman universe we'd be living in. <laughs> Let's take a look at the Joker. There he is. Love that Joker. He looks like a demented He-Man. He's got a he's got the rose. He's got two uh, knives. A loincloth, which we're not going to look up because this is not Ethan's channel. He looks ready to fight. He's got... Oh, oh, cool. His little shoulder piece of armor has a heart, a spade, and a club, and a diamond. So it keeps with the playing card aesthetic. Whoever thought that out did a really damn good job. So I dig that a lot. <laughs> so thank you very much, Salvador. Let's open your other ones because Salvador sent in like giant, giant boxes. Like, seriously, I can't show these on camera because they're so freaking huge. Like, holy shit. Um, where did I put my knife at? Crap. I am. Um, it looks like Christmas in here, except, you know, the day before. I got like a million packing peanuts. By the way, folks, I've been stuffing envelopes and doing all this happy shit myself. I've been uh, getting ready for stealing Solo. I've been, you know, I'm going to show you guys that real quick. So for those who backed it, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, you'll get one of these in the mail, an envelope, and inside is your Stealing Solo uh, Early Bird Certificate. So if you just saw that, that's awesome. That's all you're going to see. Uh, those will be shipped out to you uh, before I go out of town. So i got to spend a lot of time getting postage ready and all this shit. But uh, thank you guys again for making Stealing Solo a reality. I really, really appreciate that. So let's open this giant box. This box is humongous. Let's see. Lord humongous. Oh, okay. What do we got in here? Again, I can't show this on camera because it's giant. It's a big, big box. Hold on. Ugh. It's this color. I can't get it on the screen. Sorry. Well, let's see. It comes with a letter from Amazon. Let's read the letter first. 
that's what came. And it's uh, hi WCBS. It's been a great year. Here's to another great year. Oh, from Mongo Ventura. Thank you very much, Mongo Ventura. I'm sorry, Salvador's boxes are the other two giant ones. Holy shit, what is this? It comes wrapped. <laughs> this is wrapped in a, a ribbon and a big box. And inside is another box. <laughs> I'm going to save this. Like It's like a Santa Claus sack. My mom's going to be like, can we save that? I'm like, yeah, mom, we'll save it. We save every damn thing. She saves wrapping paper from like a deck. Oh, shit, Godzilla. Cool. Godzilla 1992. I'm going to have to reorganize the camera to show this one. Holy shit, this is giant. I, I apologize for those who can't see it. Uh, I got the thing locked in place. There we go. Godzilla. God damn. There we go. So uh, this is amazing. This comes from Garage Toys. Let's see. Holy shit. This is giant. Thank you so much. I haven't had a Godzilla piece of merchandise in years. Oh, it's from Diamond Collectibles. Okay, it's a big Godzilla statue. Um, I'm going to open this up later and put this on my shelf. This is going to be widely displayed. Folks, Godzilla will be discussed in 2019, definitely on this channel. <laughs> oh, man, this is cool as shit. Yeah, Kendo. Oh, my fuck is right. Oh, Mongo Ventura, thank you so much. Kendo, uh, let's make a list of our Godzilla films for 2019. We'll start working on those when I get back. We'll do a couple. We'll do a lot of our extra commentaries and stuff before uh, we get too deep into the new year. Before celebration, we'll get tons and tons of backlogged stuff. Oh, my God. Let's see. There we go. Put that back up there. Okay, Mongo Ventura, thank you so, so much. Okay, now I think these ones, these ones are from Salvador. Yeah, holy shit, this is, this one says Fragile. It must be Italian. It's heavy as shit, whatever it is. I, I can't complain, though. I mean, why the hell would I complain? Let's see, let's use my katana, which is Japanese sword. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, let's cut through the tape. Whatever it is, it costs $40 to ship. Holy shit. Man, the post office, man. It's making a killing. Let's see what's happening in the bottom right corner. That was probably the Christmas bag that popped up in the frame. Okay, Salvador sent in. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a giant box of toys. Okay. It says, read me first. From Salvador. Oh, hi, Jeff. Oh, hi, Salvador. So let's see what we got here. A letter, a Christmas card that says, you're the shit. <laughs> and, and this fell out. While I read this, you guys can check it out. It says, hey, Jeff, I hope you enjoy the enclosed toys slash collectibles comics. Some were purchased specifically for you. Others are from my personal collection. Oh, thank you that I thought would be happier in yours. In the box, everything is tied to something you have mentioned on a stream. I send this to you as a thank you for reminding everyone that we are not alone. We are friends, we are family, and we are many. We are the People's Republic of Pop Culture in Salvador. <laughs> True picture of a clown that has no penis. <laughs> the clown has no penis. <laughs> oh my God, this is awesome. Thank you so much, Salvador. Oh, let's see. You got to throw this other box over there. Shit. Not in front of the space heater. Yeah, close enough. Okay, now here comes the fun part. Let's see what's in this giant, giant Salvador package. Kendo, there's some Batman 89 shit in here. I think you're going to be a little jealous of. So, oh, wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> First off, since we talked about this earlier, here's a classic for me, at least. Bespin Han Solo in a nice collectible packaging. So as a kid, I loved this toy a lot. 97 Han Solo was my favorite for a while. And on the back, we got, oh, there we go. Good old Han Solo himself. Uh, let's see. As a kid, I had Bib Fortuna. I didn't have the Emperor Bosk or uh, Luke in Stormtrooper gear, but I did have the T-16 Skyhopper. And I tried to join the Star Wars fan. I did join the Star Wars fan club as a child. So that is awesome. That is going to be hung up. 
Uh, yeah, I'm keeping it in the collector's box for sure. Thank you very much. Oh my god, there's tons of shit. So let's look at this Batman 89 box. Oh my god, number one hit movie. Damn right, it's a number one hit movie. Uh oh, hold on, wait. There's a lot of shit in here. First off, we got Ghostbusters training manual, a guide to catching ghosts. And we have Ghostbusters featuring the ugly little spud, 12 collectible stickers inside. And oh, it tells the story of the movie. Oh, this is awesome. And all the stickers are still intact. And uh, let's see what else we got. So, yeah, it's the story of Ghostbusters. Oh, this is neat. Zoo, motherfucker. So, <laughs> there's the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. True story about the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. I may have told this one on camera. Uh, when my mom was pregnant with me, she worked for Kenner for a little bit, stuffing boxes of Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. So... Uh, let's see. We got that one. That tells the story of the film as well. We got the ugly little spud, a.k.a. Slimer. That is awesome. Love Ghostbusters. Let's see what else in this Batman box. We got, ooh, Batman trading cards. Looks like an entire set. Not going to open these up on camera, but there is a whole box of these. So we got Batman 89 stuff. That's the first series right there. Oh, man. I got to get one of those binders. I feel like I'm collecting Pokemon cards all over again. <laughs> oh, Salvador, you rock, dude. You rock. We break for nobody. And the clown has no penis. <laughs> oh, my God. There's so much stuff. I'm not trying to breeze through it. There's a ton in this box. Holy shit. Okay, let's see what else we got. We got, oh, we got the rock. I don't own this rock figure right here. I don't even think I actually... I mean, I don't even have that one. All I know is that these are going on the rock shelf uh, as soon as this stream is over. I'm gonna Before I put anything else away, the rock is going to a shelf. We got to add to the people's collection, Jabroni. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got. We got... Aw, perfect. Aston Martin DB5 from James Bond, Goldfinger. Love it. Love it. Oh, my God, that... That's going on the James Bond shelf. And yes, there's a James Bond shelf. Here's something I never had as a kid, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to add it to my collection. Mr. Freeze from Batman the Animated Series. Oh, my God. And he's even got the back piece. I might have to take him out and maybe see if it works because I got Batman. I'm not going to. I'm not confirming or denying I'm going to play with these later. <laughs> oh, cool. We got Bruce Wayne. We got young Bruce Wayne from Batman 89 and old Bruce Wayne from Batman Beyond. Oh, my God. I never had any Batman Beyond toys, so that's a new thing for me. Ooh, a Spider-Man figure I never had. There we go. This is what I'm talking about. Oh, that's a 90s Spider-Man right there. Never had the black and red one. So it's like Eric Larson meets Spider-Man the Animated Series. And he's got the spider on the back. He's got pegs on his feet. They don't do that anymore. And that probably is going to... Not probably. That's definitely going on the Spider-Man shelf as well. So, Salvador, again, thank you very much. Uh, let's see. We had two Super Chats rolling. First off, Edward Antonowitz says, I love that Aquaman had many connections to the Romans. I did, too. And when he went to Sicily, have you guys seen a more beautiful, like, vista? That like, The ocean and everything was amazing. And, you know, normally when they show little kids in movies and shit, I find it hokey. But I thought that they did a damn good job, especially when Mira was uh, dealing with that little girl and she... Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Okay. I've never had one of these before. I'm sorry to cut you off, Edward Antonowitz. I'll get right back to your Super Chat, and then I'll show this. I really enjoyed how they played with her, played into her, like, using her magical powers to show the little girl the um, the dolphins and all that stuff. I thought that was really neat. And then when she was in the wine shop, Mira was pretty cool, but she never did a disservice to Aquaman himself. So uh, much respect to how they treated Amber Heard. Now, I'm not going to eat this on camera, but I've always wanted a box of Batman cereal. <laughs> this is awesome. This is awesome. Oh, my God. This is amazing. That is awesome. Gregory Harlow, thank you very, very much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Gregory Harlow, and thank you for joining us here on the channel all the time. If you guys are going to have... Oh, if you have to work on Christmas, I apologize in advance. Or advance, advance. I don't know what that is. Advance. I'm sorry. But... Uh, hopefully, if you're working today, you're hanging out with us and uh, having some fun. This is incredible. <laughs> Batman cereal. Like I said, I'll never eat this, 
But this is going to go up on my Batman shelf, and it's even got the Bat Bank, which is kind of scary because it's like a sticker of Michael Keaton's face underneath a molded plastic uh, thing. But this is awesome. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> I love this. Let's look. And the back is just the regular box of cereal made by Ralston. I don't even think they're around, or they did Purina Puppy Chow or some shit like that. Oh, Bat Flakes. Mm. Natural honey nut flavor. I'm assuming these taste like Captain Crunch. So what I'll do is I'll look at this box and I'll get a bowl of Captain Crunch and I'll really enjoy it. <laughs> uh, when's the eat by date? Okay. It says, um, it just says 32Z277X on the top. It doesn't say when to eat by, but this is so old that it doesn't even have the standard nutritional information serving on the side. It's like black and white, red and green, the funkiest thing you've ever seen. Oh yeah. Purina Company. So yeah, this is the people that make Purina Public Chow that make the Batman cereal. Or you're an admiral in the Rebel Alliance on Hoth. You make the call. <laughs> okay, what we got here? More Batman the Animated Series figures that are going to go up. I might have to do a little display. So we got Scarecrow. And we got Two-Face. Awesome. Never had either of those as a kid. I honestly think the only toy I had from that show was Batman. And that's about it. But uh, no complaints. So to keep in line with our Super Savage World buffed up action figures, we got Michael Myers. So now Michael Myers can fight the Joker and Batman in gladiatorial Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I mean, look at those knives. Oh my God, I love it. I love it. From Halloween Resurrection, Nick, trick or treat, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, Okay, now this is awesome, and I love it. Ecto-1, boom, going on my, hey, you can see me. Uh, hi uh it's going on my shelf next to the deloreans so that's going to be amazing thank you again uh I, let me look it says check the bottom for the expiration date on the bottom of the box it's got a upc code and it's got a sticker that says atm so i don't know what that means at all but it's awesome uh let's see we got a poster tube with a poster that says terror never rests in peace and it's a, is this a Michael Myers? It's a Halloween 6 poster. <laughs> oh, it's a double-sided theatrical poster. Cool. I can't, there's no way I could show it on camera, but there's like part of it. It's Michael Myers' face. There's his eye hole. <laughs> ah, you guys, I'm going to have to get a new place to do, I need to get a fucking clubhouse or something to put all this pop cultural or uh, pop culture ephemera, and, you know, that's going to be, ugh. people are like, why'd you move? Well, I have this channel, and they send me stuff, and I needed to move to have a space for everything. So to keep up with the Michael Myers theme, we also got, oh, this is fucking cool. A Michael Myers coffee mug. 11 ounces of evil. So when it's hot, it says John Carpenter's Halloween. When it's room temperature, it's plain. And when you add hot liquid, it makes Michael Myers mask. Oh, that is fucking cool. That's really cool. And Michael Myers is waving. 11 ounces of you. Hey, you guys! Stay hydrated. <laughs> uh, while we're on the topic of mugs, we got a Batman 89 collector's mug by Applause. I don't even think they're around anymore. I used to love the little Applause figures. I'm going to open this one up because it's open. Oh, my God. It's a classic. A bat mug made by Applause. Oh, uh, made in Korea. Cool. 19, what? 19. Oh, no. DC Comics 1964. There's no way that's made in 64. That must just be Applause Incorporated's thing. Uh, this mug was bought at Herald Square for $7 back in the day. <laughs> There's a little sticker on the bottom of the box. And it's funny you sent this, Salvador, because I do collect some mugs. And uh, your bat mug is... It's a classic. I might not drink out of it. I might just put it up on my shelf because I really don't want anything to happen to it. I fucking love Batman. Get a storage locker with electrical outlets like what Cra Lazy Games Review did. I love LGR. That's one of my favorite channels. Uh, I will watch anything that guy puts out. We got two more Batman the Animated Series figures. We got Bane and Man Bat. So I seriously almost have like the whole rogues gallery. Oh my god, this is so cool. Sorry, Bane. We also got another Mr. Freeze. So we got uh, alternate costume Mr. Freeze. Somebody pressed R trigger on the PlayStation. 
and we got alternate suits now. Oh, this is awesome. Another, it's funny that you sent this too. Maybe I talk about it and you caught up with what I was saying. But so I bought a couple of months ago at the half price bookstore. I bought this Luke Skywalker figure. This is mine. This is one sent in the box. But I bought this because it was like five bucks. I thought, you know what? This was the first Star Wars figure I had. It really takes me back. Yeah, he's a little buff. I'm going to keep it in the box for fun. Well, now Salvador adds to that collection by sending me my favorite Star Wars character, Han Solo, in a nice collector's case. Again, I got to keep it in the case. I feel like I'm going to start collecting these because they're not that expensive and I'm going to have the whole wave like just attached to my wall somewhere. <laughs> but this was the first... Um, this was the first Han... Let's take it back. This wasn't the first Han Solo figure I ever got. This was the sec third. My, I'll never forget this. And this isn't a complaint, but this is back to being a kid. So my first Star Wars Christmas, my mom... I had found out Santa Claus wasn't real very early on because my mom refuses to lie to me. Even to this day, she won't lie about anything. So admirable trait, but kind of ruined it early for me. But I'm not too mad. So she takes me out. She's letting me pick whatever I want for Christmas. And I was going to buy this Han Solo. And she goes, no, get this one in Carbonite. You get more toys for the same price. So I listened to my mom. Well, then I would watch the movies and Han Solo didn't have a vest or a jacket. So I hated using him because he didn't have that or his gun or anything. So eventually I got a best or um, an Endor figure. My grandma bought it for me and I took off the jacket and then he had camo sleeves. So eventually I got this damn figure and I loved it. Some people say it looks nothing like Harrison Ford. I think it looks pretty good. And you can see a reflection of the camera in the background. I love this figure It um, for nostalgic reasons. I'm never going to take it out of the box, but it's so awesome. And now here's the back of the box. So thank you again, Salvador. And I always talk about having all the Star Wars figures. I have everything you see here on this back. And I got it when I was a kid. I was a very spoiled kid. My mom busted her ass to give me anything I wanted, everything I could possibly want, except Donkey Kong Country. And I had all this shit when it was new. So I remember getting um, Vader, no, Luke, C-3PO, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Darth Vader at Kroger. My uncle, the one that passed away this year, took me to Kroger on my birthday to get those. Uh, that Christmas, I got the Millennium Falcon, X-Wing, and TIE Fighter from other people. My mom bought me the Land Speeder at Walmart one day because it was cheap. Luke was also, you know, early on. And then I got a Stormtrooper Han and Chewbacca at some point later. And then Princess Leia as well. But I love these. And um, while admittedly they're not the best Star Wars figures ever made, never was going to argue that, uh, they take me back. So this is awesome. And this is something that I'm going to definitely cherish and get myself some more of these cases. And... Um, Maybe I'll get the original the original wave and hang up on my wall. So thank you very much, Salvador. Uh, Thunder Robots, thank you very much for Super Chat. It says, a house is just a place for your stuff, George Carlin. <laughs> yeah, George Carlin was right about a lot of things. George Carlin's right about a lot of things. I gotta give him credit. Oh, cool. This is fun. A Toy Biz 1989 Batman figure. And now his belt is like a uh, grappling hook. So I had one of these growing up as a kid. Now, the funny thing is, I'm going to show you something else on camera, too, while we look at Batman slide down. There's my shadow. Um, so Toy Biz had a Batman line when the movie came out in 1989. And it wasn't very good. And it only had four, three figures, a few vehicles, and a shitty Batcave. And then Kenner came in and bought the line. And in 1990, they released this. So you just saw the Toy Biz equivalent right here. And this is the Kenner equivalent. And I had to get one of these brand new in the box because this was one of my favorite toys. But before there was, you know, the whole line and the Joker and all these different Batmans and all this other shit, there was this Toy Biz line. And the Toy Biz line holds a very special place in my heart. Again, there goes Batman sliding down because it was the first Batman figure I ever had. And uh, yeah, there's different face variants and everything. So it was a lot of fun. But I really, really loved this growing up as a kid. So thank you, Salvador, again. You're bringing back so many memories. This box, the thing is, he sent another box just as big, and there's a ton of shit in it. So this is going to go up and be put away in my house specially. Uh, this is going to be, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but this is vintage, and I love it. I'm a Ghostbuster. I am a Ghostbuster. Bustin makes me feel good. <laughs> um, here we go. We got a Harley Quinn. I've never owned a Harley Quinn from the original series, so this is awesome. I do have the Joker, so she's going to go with the Joker. So Batman, Joker, Harley Quinn, awesome. Uh, let's see who else we got. Oh, shit, I didn't have this one as a kid either. Now I do. It's Robin. <laughs> cool. 
I never thought I'd be happy over a fucking Robin action figure, but I am. Okay, what else we got? Oh, so remember how he sent that black and white Spider-Man or the black and red Spider-Man? He also sent another one brand new in the box. So now I don't have an excuse to need to open this up. I will just uh, keep this one. I'm going to get an acrylic case for this one too and hang it up. Oh man, 90s toys. Not the best, but definitely I'm nostalgic for them. And this is the toy line of Spider-Man I played with growing up as a kid. Loved it. I uh, have a lot of those figures still. Mainly Spider-Man, no villains. And let's take a look at the back real quick. So we got, um, let's see, Black Suit Spider-Man, Chameleon, Mysterio, Spider-Man Web Glider, The Prowler, Venom 2 with removable Eddie Brockhead. Superposable Spider-Man was my favorite. I bought a couple of those, actually. Fun story. I was at a comic convention, and a guy had one in a box that was ripped up. And I was like, this box is all ripped up. How much you want for it? He's like, two bucks. So I got one brand new in the box for two bucks. And then I had this um, Daily Bugle playset. My grandma bought it for me because it was on clearance. And it looks cool, but it was a piece of shit. <laughs> so while I loved it, and I have a great memory of it, um, it broke really quickly. And I'm just like, damn it. So I, when I got a house, I might do a Spider-Man setup and get one of these at the forefront because I still love that. <laughs> But yeah, they used to come with these gnarly little Spider-Man pins. And I think the artwork on this was either done by some production artist. Yeah, I was like, it looks like Alex Savick's, art, Savick's artwork. And the guy that drew this comic professionally, the uh, Adventures of Spider-Man for the cartoon, or the from the animated series, I'm friends with him on Facebook. True story, I was working for an artist named Neil Adams at a comic show. He was nice. He paid really well. But Alex Savick walked up to the table, and he was talking. he was trying to talk to Neil, but Neil was busy with a commission, so I was like, hey... And I recognize them because I'm one of those people, if I like an artist, I want to know what they look like and, you know, learn a little bit about them. I talked to him for about 30 minutes. He was the nicest dude. He's like, friend me on Facebook, this, that, and the other. So now I see him like post Happy Hanukkah stuff and how much he loved Into the Spider-Verse and all this crap and how he's so honored to have Tombstone, a character he created, get into a movie. So uh, the people you meet at these conventions will blow you away. So uh, let's see what else we got. We got, ooh, this is pretty damn awesome. Um, Inside of this case is a Bespin Han Solo, a vintage Bespin Han Solo. Let's, let's pop him out. Oh, he even comes with the gun. Ah, you put the proper gun on him. So the vintage Han Solo came with a Bespin blaster, and it kind of sucked. But you went out of the way to put the Han Solo blaster in his hand. So there we go. And look at how little a Star Wars figure is. It's like the size of my finger. <laughs> when I complain about the Nintendo Switch controllers, now you guys know. That's you know my finger and Han Solo there. I'm fingering Han Solo. Oh, this is cool, though. I love this case. It's got, like, a screw-on lid. It's threaded. Mm. I'm, I'm getting rid of one hobby and taking up another. <laughs> uh, what else we got in here? Comic books. We got Spider-Man Maximum Clonage. Uh, that's issue number one, and I guess that's a variant cover, or that's the Omega cover. We also got uh, Avengers. Number 236, with art by, who is the cover artist? Al Milgram and Joe Sinnott. Cool. I love both of those guys' work. We got, what if Daredevil became an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Fantastic artwork right there. Love it. Uh, Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man, the final battle. Al Milgram. See? Black and red Spider-Man. I think like that's the theme of this box, Salvador. <laughs> this is the box. <laughs> Uh, Marvel 2-in-1, The Thing and the Angel, and you can win a Toys R Us shopping spree. I wonder if that's still good. And that artwork was done by uh, Wilson Simons. I don't know who that is. Or if that's somebody Wilson and some. I don't know who a Simons would be. And then we got this awesome Marvel Zombies True Believer Edition, number one. Signed, holy shit, by Arthur Studium. Cool! Thank you. <laughs> a signed comic. I love these. Now, this box isn't all sunshine and rainbows. There are two things in this box that make a grown man cry. Not tears of sadness, but tears of joy. And if you're the man called Ethan Van Skyver, well, you might be creaming your pie-covered panties right about now for Rose Tico. <laughs> I feel like that was an awesome setup for that. And because Salvador is a good guy, he does not believe in letting your friends play alone. So there's a secondary Rose Tico. So we got two Rose Ticos in the house, ladies and gentlemen. 
Not one, but two Ticos. Oh my god, I got here comes the fun part of putting this stuff back in the box. So I can uh God, there's another one. Holy shit. There, there are like five more packages to open up. I was worried in the middle of this. I was like, man, we're not going to be able to do a whole show. I better get ready to talk about Aquaman some more. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Holy shit. <sighs> I can't complain. Better than fucking Christmas. This is, this is Christmas early. Oh, my God. This is great. My mom's going to come up. What the hell happened to your office? Well, Mom, I opened up the P.O. box. So. Oh, what'd you get, honey? Everything. <laughs> So there's some Rose Tico stuff. I'm going to let you guys chew on Rose Tico for a moment as I put away this amazing box. This is, a, this is like, if you would have gave this to me as a kid, I might have just like OD'd or something. Heart, had a heart attack. Like, oh my God, it's a box of toys. <laughs> Everything in here. Even, even Rose Tico. I can joke about Funko Pops, but it's Rose Tico and it came from Salvador, so it's special. So thank you, Salvador. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else we got? Oh my God. Between... Uh, we'll get the Salvador's next box in a moment. It's actually a little farther away. So I gotta move this one. And let's see. Holy shit. I know you guys can see this damn office. You'd be like, what the hell happened to it? Okay. We got Batman and all. Okay, so this one, let's see. It's a, a smaller box, so I can show it on camera. Again, do not want to give out the person's private information as to avoid any kind of issues. So I will open it up. I will see if there's a letter inside. I will read it, and we will start discussing. I believe I know who this is from based on their name, but I don't want to tell their real name on air. So that is not for me to do. Some people like to share and get involved in the community. If that's something you're into, uh, hang out with us. We're a lot of fun. Okay, let's see here. All right. Hey, cool. Lots of stuff. So first off, we got a letter. That says, Jeff, sorry, I dislike Disney stars as much as you, but I had to do it. I felt left out, so I had to get you Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2 3 on DVD. The top plays the theme of Beverly Hills Cop Merry Christmas from the Pui. Ah, the Pui. Thank you very much, and good morning. So the Pui sent in um, this gnarly spaceship thing. Was this, Does it like... <laughs> that is awesome. Oh my god, that is amazing. Anything that plays Axel F makes me happy. Oh, okay, there's a piece to it. Oh, okay. I have a bad feeling I'm going to piss a lot of people off with this. <laughs> if it plays Axel F, you know I'm going to love it. Oh, wait. There's a lot of stuff in here, actually. Cool. So the queen sent in, because I loved Han Solo so much, you got to get his partner, Chewbacca. So we got the Disney toy box, Chewbacca, and he looks cool. He's got all kinds of nice painted on features, the big fingernails, all that stuff. He comes with his crossbow, or his bowcaster, as they would call it. Uh, obviously, we got more Beverly Hills Cop, another edition I don't have. So I do make it a point to collect every edition out there. So Dion, we can watch Beverly Hills Cop 3 now anytime you want. <laughs> and uh, there we go. We got... WWE Legends trading card or playing cards, excuse me. Now, this is something I never talk about. I collect playing cards. I got Beetlejuice, Batman, Power Rangers, you name it, I'll collect it. And on the back, we got there's my dad, Andre the Giant, Ric Flair, the Nature Boy, all kinds of awesome stuff. So I'm gonna add these to the collection. I don't know if I want to open them up to play with them. To be fair, I usually play with these Playboy cards because I bought them in Spain as a kid, and I was like, oh my god, they sold them to me, and I thought it was so cool. But Thank you very much, the Pui. Again, this is going on my wrestling collection shelf. This is going with the rest of Beverly Hills Cop and Han Solo and Chewbacca will unite on my toy shelf because these are fucking cool. So thank you very much. Oh, man. There's still more. <laughs> Ooh, let's see what else. Ah, my other coffee cup. Shit. Okay, so we're down to the final two packages. We're going to give Salvador the finale. Uh, let's see what else we got. But this one comes from our buddy Jason again. Thank you very much, Jason, for everything. I'm digging the records big time. Like I said, I'm going to take that up to Dion. We're going to listen to Richard Pryor and laugh our asses off. Oh, cool. It's a box of cars. So let's see what we got in here. We got a letter. That says, hey, Jeff, just a little Christmas cheer. I'm sending your way to say thanks for Good Morning Pop Culture and the High Council. The records are original, not 
uh, reprints. If you ever have children, these will be something fun to pass along. Jason. <laughs> oh, these are awesome. I'll have kids one day, but I'm going to keep these for myself. <laughs> so first off, let's make Kendo jealous. John Wick. Boom. Let's see how far I can get that into frame. Then we got Bullets, 1968 Dodge Charger. What's a Dodge Charger? I don't know. All right, we got the Bandits, 1980 Pontiac. Cool, from Smokey and the Bandit Part 2. We got the 1977 Dodge Monaco from the Terminator, not the LGBT 1000. We got more John Wick. We got the 1969 Ford Mustang Boss 429. All right, there's so you guys can check it out. We got the Matrix, a 1965 Lincoln Continental. My grandpa had one of those cars. It's a classy vehicle. You can see the ceiling. And finally, Bullets 1968 Ford Mustang GT. I'm glad I saw this one last because this is a pimp car right here. It's cool. I love that movie's chase scene. That is one of the coolest car chases in cinema. So there we go. We got a bunch of these. And these are the Greenlight, Greenlight Hollywood edition. So I'm going to keep these in the box as well because, well, they're fun. And I can add this next to my family truckster, my Wagon Queen family truckster. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, yes, eat tip a coin. I'm glad you're in the chat right now. I love the box. It was too sweet, bro. So we're going to have um, – we'll come to your channel. If you want, we'll all – I'll try to get everybody on there. Well, Nick and Kendo would be – or Dion and Kendo would be the ones that want to talk wrestling with you. But if you'd love to have – or if you'd like to have us all on, we'd love to be there to shoot the shit about wrestling and definitely have you on here to talk about your days in the pro wrestling business. Um, my friend Loudy tried to make it in, but he got injured. He had a concussion early on, and he – you know, had to get out of it real quick. But, you know, you went a little further. So let's see. This is the final package. Again, this is giant, very giant. So it's too big to show on screen. But it is from our friend Salvador, I believe. You know, I used a knife to cut the tape, but it just wasn't enough. Oh, cool. Holy shit. I'm kind of glad I didn't get this now because I was going to buy this. <laughs> so this comes from Salvador. It says, hey, Jeff, enjoy your gift, except expect another package. Okay, that was the other box. So this is a fucking cool way to close out. Not to close out. We're not going to close it out just yet. Uh, we'll talk about other stuff in a minute. Oh, man. I don't know. I can't show this on. Ugh. Um. This is it. <laughs> it's a giant sentinel. <laughs> oh, my God. That is awesome. So we got X-Men Days of Future Past with front cover artwork by Mike Diodato. This is all raised. This is amazing. We open it up, and you're thinking, what is it? What is it, a big book? No, it is a big-ass action figure. So first off, we got a little bit of history of the Sentinels right here. So that's cool. We got to learn about the Sentinels. We got some artwork. And then over here, we got the actual proper figure. So let's see what the Sentinel does. Oh, cool. X-Men must be detained. Life form detected. Oh. Halt. Oh, my God. Now I got all these X-Men figures to go with a Sentinel. Cool. And we got Wolverine. Um, I don't know if you can see Wolverine yet. Uh, there's Wolverine. Sorry about the production work. I am not Nick. I am not a professional cameraman. But we got Nick, uh, Wolverine in an awesome outfit. He's got two sets of hands. He's got gloved hands. He's got a pistol to go in his holster. He's got clawed hands. He is ready to tear your shit up. And this Sentinel, oh, man, it is awesome. That is giant, and that is amazing. <laughs> I have 30 seconds to fly. Comply. Um, the Puy, Merry Christmas, the Puy. I hope you're not late, man. We just opened your box. I loved the top and everything in it. That was awesome. So thank you very much to the Puy. Um, man, whoo. Must have been a good boy this year to get all this awesome stuff at Christmas. <laughs> but guys, I just want to thank you so, so much for uh, everything that was sent in. Let's turn this off for a minute. Let me get recalibrated in this office. Man, thanks, man. I, I honestly need a bigger place now <laughs> for all this awesome shit. Thank you guys so, so much. Oh, man. So let me make another cup of coffee while we talk this morning. Let's see where we are. Uh, we have wow, we have 300 people watching right now. Oh, we'll keep this. I have my TV hooked up, my other TV, as my secondary screen so I can see everything that you guys are. Uh... Yeah, that is awesome. 
This one's for you, Morph. <laughs> Is it wrong? The first thing I thought after looking at that, besides holy shit, was Wolverine laying in bed touching a picture frame. <laughs> I know that's crazy to think that, but uh, you know, I love that show. I love that meme. Oh man, oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you, seriously. Thank you guys so much. Um, I never once hated doing this channel all year. It's been an incredible year, and yeah, it's awesome to see the numbers go up and stuff. But it's so nice that everybody's so into it. Like it really does mean a lot to all of us here on the channel. You know, we, the thing is, Kendo, Nick, and I, we love doing this show. We're always excited. We're always talking about it. We're always trying to come up with new ways to keep you guys entertained. And never once does it feel like a hassle or a commitment that nobody wants to keep. It's always so much fun. So for everything that you guys sent in, obviously, thank you. But for being here with us all the time means a whole hell of a lot, too. You know, I'd watch all these other YouTube channels. And I'm like, man, that looks so much like so much fun. And now we're here, too. And it's it's awesome. I mean, we keep on going up. We just keep on rolling, and next year is going to be a much bigger year. I've learned a couple things, and I'll tell you this. I will find a way to make sure Good Morning Pop Culture always has a place as well as single-release videos because while I like to grow you know, 500 subscribers in a day, uh, Good Morning Pop Culture is a community that I wouldn't trade for anything. You guys are awesome. So many people are involved and invested in it. And I have a great time too. You know, yeah, I used to love to be able to sleep in, do my videos, stay up till three in the morning, do whatever willy nilly. Now I'm a little more structured, but it's great. It's really great. And uh, man, all this, all this awesome stuff Godzilla, Star Wars, Batman, three Dr. Elsa Schneiders. I go from zero to three, man. I feel awesome. I feel accomplished. <laughs> Too bad Kendo is not proud of the quality content we put out. Um, Yutali, I appreciate the thought of sending cigars. Personally, I don't smoke, so I would just give them to Dion or Joel, but I guess we have to have a celebratory cigar. That's all I can say. Uh, Secret Rebel says, that was going to be a Toys R Us exclusive. We all know what happened to Toys R Us. Awesome people showing love for world-class bullshitters. Merry Christmas. Very, very true. <laughs> this one's for you, Muff. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Six Scale Combat. Logan Michael says, did you get my packages? Logan Michael, are you... Are... No, you're not, unless you're the person that sent it. I went to the P.O. Box on Friday. No, Saturday. Uh, this is everything I received over the last two visits. There might be more waiting since Saturday afternoon, but this is everything I got. Um, yeah, this is everything. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, I did not leave anything out in the car. I did not lose anything. Logan, Michael, I'll have to uh, go back to the post office because I know for sure this is all of it. So uh, thank you very much for your super chat. But yeah, that's that's everything that was sent in. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. That Godzilla figure is awesome. It is amazing. I kind of want to open it up, but I honestly, if I open it up, I don't have where to put it right now. I could stack a box safely. I'm one of those people, I love my collectibles, so I won't do anything to uh, destroy them or get them messed up or let them get messed up. Uh, let's see. What else we got? Do I have an Antonio Banderas blow-up doll? No, but I hope you send me three in the new year. I want an Antonio Banderas blow-up doll for every fan of world-class bullshitters. That is my platform. I'm running in 2019. For what? I don't know. But everybody gets an Antonio Banderas blow-up doll. Uh, Jeff, can I see the Godzilla figure? I just popped in. Sure, isn't that Devon Graham? Um, how was the Eric Freeman experience? So if you guys don't know, the Garbage Day guy, and you're like, what's Garbage Day? Garbage Day is an internet meme. There we go. Oh, shit. Let's do that. Garbage Day is an internet meme that really took off. And um, so this is a giant Godzilla. Let's see if I can move it back a smidge. Godzilla. No Godzuki. There we go. Godzilla in full effect. Garage toy. So there you go. Let's see. Uh, Marath Dialine says, hello. Hello, Marath Dialine, and Merry Christmas to our favorite limerick spitter. <laughs> uh, I'm going to watch uh, the Eric Freeman interview. I'm actually going to ask him to come on our channel. That's going to be something I try to work out pretty heavily next year. There's a lot of interview celebrity stuff. I'd love to uh, get a lot of actors on 
I'm personal friends with Tommy Lee Wallace on Facebook. So I'm going to ask him if I could interview him. And if you don't know who Tommy Lee Wallace is, he directed the original it. He directed Halloween three. He's worked on quite a few projects you may have seen over the years. So he also is the guy that designed the Michael Myers mask. So I know he was real busy with the new movie and everyone was all talking about that one and you know, all this other shit, but I want to have him on to talk to him personally. I'd like to invite Alex Saviak on. He has a Facebook friend. Yeah, he's busy. He's an artist, but Ethan, Ethan's an artist, but we all know Ethan. Let's talk about somebody or talk to somebody that has worked closely with Stan Lee. I believe Stan Lee's last published work was uh, illustrated by Alex Saviak. So that'll be a lot of fun. And I'll do my best to get him on. And I might throw an invite to the Sausage Factory guys to show up and hang out with us too one night. We'll do a commentary. Those guys are cool. I used to watch, uh, what's that one guy? Rambo Raph and some random numbers. All of them. They're good guys. They do community stuff. Go give them a subscribe. That kind of stuff really makes uh, YouTube a much happier place. Oh, Salvador says, I'm late. What did I miss? Oh, hi, Jeff. Merry Christmas. I hope you're just joking, Salvador, because I opened up your amazing packages. Holy shit. Seriously, the Wolverine and the Sentinel is incredible. So incredible. And then that box of everything but the kitchen sink, again, incredible. Um, dude, you sent like everything I could possibly want in a, in a box. It was cool. It had everything. It had wrestling, Star Wars, Batman. Even Rose Tico made me happy. Holy shit, was that awesome. So, folks, make sure when Salvador's channel launches, you do him a solid and subscribe. He's been on our streams before, but um, we want to see everybody grow massively in 2019. That is my goal, to get everyone um, to help them out. We want to get Cecil to 10,000 or 50,000 or whatever you want to uh, get Cecil to. All kinds of crazy stuff. Oh, Sketch Therapy. It's okay. You're late, man. You have to watch the replay of this one. I opened up all the packages. They're incredible. By the way, Sketch Therapy, I talked about you. I would like you to work out the Star Wars um, fan films, and we should start with our Vader one because it's new and people want to talk about it. When I get back from Michigan, we will figure out the schedules. You're up first. Um, the guys and I will record our commentaries that we promised because we promised, but you are like a giant patron and you requested some shit, and we're going to make it happen. So you just make sure to get in contact with me, and I will get in contact with you. Uh, let's see. Dr. Coffin Nails. I saw Aquaman. Loved it. Uh, let's see. A Thunder Robot. Yours might be at the post office. Yes, it might be. I tell you, they at the post office, when they see me walk in the door, because I'm very noticeable, they instantly go and back and get the packages for me. So I don't even have to show them the thing. They go, yep, you're 5069. And they just bring me everything. Oh, man. Get Star Wars Theory on the High Council. Sure. I'd, uh, I'll, I'll invite them on. I'll invite them on. We'll see if we can make that happen. So, folks, we got Christmas tomorrow. So, obviously, world-class bullshitters will not be on. We will not be live unless the Star Wars Episode Nine trailer drops. So, if you're desperate to hear from me tomorrow, you better hope that that trailer drops or some newsworthy information because, you know, it's been a really busy year, and I'm really enjoying the family time. My mom's been off for the last couple of days. She's at work today, but she's off tomorrow and the next day. So, we're going to go do some stuff, and we're going to... Um, my mom's Christmas tradition, besides cooking and all this great stuff, she loves to go out the day after Christmas and pick up um, shit on sale. So she'll go, like we got, I bought Dion's kid and um, his sister's kid Christmas gifts. So obviously they're little kids. They don't know how to listen to the show. But I got Dion's son, the entire Ninja Turtles set, except April and Splinter because they don't make them. Or I couldn't find them. But you know that Shredder is not the villain of the Ninja Turtles anymore? It's some other dude. And I was like, who is this? I'm like, it's the bad guy. And I went to get him the turtle van, but it was sold out. So I just got him the turtles and all the bad guys. And then uh, Dion's has, Dion has a twin sister, Diane, and her son's into Pokemon cards. So I got him all those Pokemon cards. And uh, it was weird buying Pokemon cards as an adult. But it was like, man, it's just like 1999 all over again. But the reason I brought it up is because my mom has wrapping paper for every occasion. Star Wars, Ninja Turtles, Spider-Man, X-Men, Avengers... I have the rock wrapping paper from the year 2000. Never opened it, never going to open it. But again, it's one of those things my mom got for 15 cents on clearance. I shit you not, I could wrap my house in wrapping paper. That's how much wrapping paper she had. That's not an exaggeration. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do the day after Christmas. So that is why I also will not have Good Morning Pop Culture the day after Christmas. So like I said, this is our final show for the year. 
you know, I'm going to be out of town. I got some stuff, but I'll be working on videos and you'll hear from me in other ways. And as I'm sitting here holding a packing peanut, I realize how similar in consistency they are to Cheetos and it really disturbs me. Let's see. Logan Michael, thank you very much. I recommend collecting the Mezco Cinema of Fear line. If you don't know what it is, it's an all horror version of NECA classics from 2000. Hmm. Uh, I will check that out, Logan Michael. You know I love NECA and Mezco and all that stuff. The adult-friendly collector lines. Uh, somebody asked if I would show the Sentinel again. Yes, I'll show the Sentinel again. Let's see. Sentinel. Boom. There's the Sentinel. I really just want to watch X-Men now. And not the pride of the X-Men, just, you know, X-Men, the animated series. There's the box art. There's Mike Diodato Jr. artwork. He's a great artist. I hope our friend GrendelFan84 checks this out so we can see how cool this shit is. Um, we get the coolest stuff because we got the coolest fans. We should get Thor Skywalker on the High Council. Well, I will throw out the invite. I'm going to try to get a lot more YouTubers on. What about New Year's? Are you going to be live on air? No. Uh, Dion's sister has planned a whole big party and having people from out of town and all this stuff. I wasn't going to be in here, here in Cincinnati anyway. I'm going to be up in Michigan. As always, I go there every year for New Year's. I'm going to open up this X-Men toy and play with it. I don't care if I'm 30 years old. <laughs> uh, so I won't be live on air. You may, We may do like a couple minute Happy New Year type of stream today. Hey, it's the new year and blah, blah, blah and all that stuff. But it won't be anything long form. Maybe we'll show ourselves again on camera. There's tons of videos of us. But yeah, we could do something like that maybe. But I'm like you guys. I want to go out and enjoy New Year's. Celebrate. I'm going to wear my weird velvety blue sport coat and have a good time and a lot of beer. A lot of beer. Um, I have not seen the Mezco Kong figure, but I've seen the SH Monster Arts line. I know somebody tried to... Uh... Oh, Timmy Timmy says, I got your sketch, Jeff. It's my phone's wallpaper. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad you guys... Or I'm glad you liked that stream. I'm going to look to see if they have a Christmas sale this year, but usually the people that do that program that I used to draw have an upgraded version on sale for Christmas. If they do... I'm going to buy it today, and I'm going to migrate all my work over to this new computer. And I'm going to finish stealing Solo on the computer I have so it's consistent and there's no issues with that. But I sent another batch of pages out to the colorist, and I'm pumped. I can't wait for you guys to see them. That's going to be the first big thing in 2019. Obviously, all of our videos and reviews, the great pop culture war, all that kind of stuff will be coming your way in 2019. Um. I might end the stream at 9.30. The only reason I'm saying that is because I just realized I have to go pick up our ham for Christmas. So I got to drive over to Kentucky to get a honey-baked ham that I pre-ordered last minute. Thankfully, they had some left. My mom was like, oh, no, we're not going to have a ham. What am I going to do? I'm like, Mom, I got one. It's cool. Uh, so <laughs> meat, a nice box of Christmas meat, but I never said you had a job. <laughs> So uh, let's see, Marath Theoline, thank you very much. Last night I was organizing my Star Wars movie and video collection and <coughs> audio comics, <coughs> audio books when my laptop charger cord exploded and apparently there was a frayed wire. Oh, shit. Well, Marath Theoline, I'm glad you're all right. Uh, I hope nothing besides the, you know, the cord was exploded and there was thankfully there was no fire or anything like that. So just uh, be safe and upgrade your shit if you got a man. See, when I think it was you that had the eye surgery, right? I was worried about you then. So believe me, don't uh, be safe, man. We need to have you back in the new year. Thank you. Merry Christmas to Jedi Rider Gaming. <laughs> Son of S653 just got word that we can leave work early at three today. The problem is that most people at my work already leave at three. Well, your company's really generous this time of year. You work for the Dukes Brothers? <laughs> So you guys have any questions about Aquaman or do you have any questions about anything before we close out the stream? It's Christmas. I told you guys about a couple Christmases, my Star Wars Christmas. I will regale you with a short, brief summary of the greatest Christmas ever, Christmas 1993, where it started with me going to Santa Claus at a mall and telling Santa I wanted every Power Ranger. And Santa said, Jeffrey, you'll get every Power Ranger. Well, little did I know that my mom had to make good on that promise that Santa Claus made. And she was nervous. She had no clue how she was going to get the hottest toys in the world on such short notice. So Christmas time rolls around. 
and I lose a tooth on Christmas Eve. Today, 25 years ago, I lost my first tooth. And I distinctly remember going to bed, waking up, and the tooth fairy had come to visit. Now, I didn't get a $5 bill like I normally got for my teeth. I got the blue Power Ranger, the big blue Power Ranger. And I was excited. So excited, in fact, the first thing I did was go down into the kitchen and take a fork to try to peel off the sticker on his chest. But it was painted on, so I had to deal with my blue Power Ranger with the coin on his chest. But I digress. So um, I'm over the moon. I got a Power Ranger toy. Got to understand something. As a five-year-old who went to the toy store frequently, I never saw Power Ranger toys. They were always sold out. Never saw a single one in person. I saw the commercials, and that was it. So Christmas Eve rolls around. We go to my uncle's house. And, you know, same thing we do every year. We eat. We open up gifts. That's it. And I'll never forget. Other, my other cousins got gifts. My other cousins got this. They got that. Every gift I opened up was another Power Ranger. So from this uncle, a Red Ranger. From this uncle, the Black Ranger. Pink Ranger, Yellow Ranger. So I went home with all five Power Rangers, and I was over the moon. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. You know, some people had G.I. Joe and USS Flag and uh, Transformers and all these other toy lines, but I was Power Rangers. And I got all five of them, and I was pumped. I went to bed a very happy kid. But it wasn't over. Next morning, I wake up. It's Christmas. You know, the tree's got all the gifts under it. I'm ecstatic. My grandma's like, oh, hold on, honey. We got to get your mom. Because my mom back then, she worked at a factory. She worked at a bag factory. So when I say my mom has seen some shit, she has seen some shit. That's why I get, when they talk about, you know, strong women, I look at my mom and go, my mom's busted her ass and never complained once. She's done what she's had to do. She raised me. She's been responsible. And she did it on very little money. So Believe me, the older I get, the more I appreciate all the shit that she did for me. That's why I have a different stance than other people on, uh, you know, strong, independent ladies. So Christmas, I go to bed. I wake up. Everything's great. What do I get under the tree? The Megazord. What do I get? The Dragon Zord of the Green Ranger. What do I get? Titanus. What else did I get? I don't remember because it wasn't Power Ranger shit. But I had almost everything in the toy line in one day. And it was truly the best Christmas ever. Now, one side note. Mom being as awesome as she was, she got me the wrong Megazord. And you're thinking, how do you get the wrong Megazord? Well, to be fair, she got me the Megazord that didn't transform. And I didn't complain. I wasn't mad. I wasn't spoiled like that. But I couldn't get it to make the Dragon Zord combination. So we figure out that there's another Megazord figure. So about two weeks later, we're out looking at stuff. We go into Toys R Us. And there it is, the deluxe Megazord. And I'm like, Mom, I got the other stuff. I got to have it. So what does my mom do? Buys me that too. So within the span of whatever, I got another Megazord and the rest was history. And I played with those toys for years and I still have them on my shelf. There's the Megazord. There's the Dragon Zord. And there are all the Power Rangers with the white one who joined later on for my birthday the next year. They're all there. So that was the best Christmas of my life. It was awesome. Uh, I still get excited to talk about it. And the older I get, it's not as much about the toys as it is my mom who made it happen. And I'll never forget, she told me this story years later. She goes, you know how I got you all those toys? And I go, how? She goes, I went to Kentucky Toys R Us, the one that I used to film in. And she would go, yeah, that was the only Toys R Us that would let me order stuff. So she said, I'm on the phone at Toys R Us, and she's on this distribu uh, distributor line, and they're ordering shit especially for her from like the distributor from Japan or whatever, or wherever Bandai's out of, Hong Kong or something. And she blindly bought everything. And she said, I just went to Toys R Us, and there it all was. I had no clue what any of this shit was, but I knew you got it. So that was awesome, and that was a lot of fun for me. Let's see. The Grand Inquisitor, thank you very much for your super chat. Merry Christmas, Jeff. Glad I found this channel. <laughs> well, thank you, Grand Inquisitor, very much. Um, I'm glad you found this channel as well, and I'm glad you're a part of the community. Excuse me, I was taking a sip of coffee. It's been, honestly, uh, I used to consider the 2008-2009 college school year the best year of my life. It was fun. It was exciting. Party did all kinds of shit. Uh, this year beat it. Yeah, it was a lot of work, but when you love what you're doing, does it really work? I don't think so. Uh, Chris Wick says, back from mass, prayed for no SJWs in Star Wars. Well, I'm hoping that your prayers come true this year, Chris Wicks. Um, I'm hoping the same thing happens in 2019. Brett the Aline, thank you very much. Thankfully, nothing else was harmed, and before my computer died from lack of charge, I was able to order a new charger cable, thinking about upgrading as well. Uh, this year was the first year of this computer, so in a couple years I'll upgrade, but uh, eventually there will be a world-class bullshitter's rig where it's just the most powerful computer. It'll be like the back computer. We'll get like six monitors, a VHS player, laser disc, all that stuff for the computer. 
it'll be incredible. I see. Uh, Seeker Rebel had a question. Uh, Aquaman, without spoiling, is there any connection to previous Justice League film? Do you think they're arresting the DCU? There's a mention of previous films like Justice League. Yeah, they mentioned Justice League, but you could watch this movie by itself, and that's not a spoiler. So I, I recommend strongly that you watch it. Seriously, I was so happy when I left the theater to watch a movie that didn't suck from DC. There's a inner credit sequence too. There's nothing after after the credits. I stayed to make sure. Um, seriously, it's not a 10 out of 10 movie, but I'll give it like a solid like 8, maybe 8.5. I really liked it. I think a lot of people are reading into some of the negative negative stuff about the film that really isn't there. And you guys know how I am. I shit on Suicide Squad and BVS and Man of Steel. I liked Wonder Woman and I liked this movie. I think this is the best DCEU movie. If you thought Wonder Woman was the greatest, watch this and get back with me. Uh, Cesario Japan, thank you very much. Uh, Mili Kalikimaka, Japanese, Japan awaits after Christmas. <laughs> oh, I love that song. It makes me think of Clark Griswold and his damn swimming pool. <laughs> Dr. Coffinales gave it an 8 out of 10. Yeah, Dr. Coffinales, you and I agree on a lot of stuff. Uh, Mutali, yes, I'm very thankful that I get to do this full time. Uh, you guys make it possible. So I'm going to double time it up next year to give you guys even more stuff, more videos, um, more stuff, just ways to get involved with the community. We got all kinds of things planned. I really, really want to do a call in on Good Morning Pop Culture. That way it can be more like a radio show, it can be more personal. We'll set up a Google Voice account, make the number public to a degree, and we'll have some fun. How would I rate it compared to Venom? I haven't seen Venom. I need to watch Venom. Maybe I'll do that up in Michigan with Dion. But go into Aquaman with, even if you have no love for the current DCU, you're not going to find a lot of Zack Snyder holdover. There's two weird moments of slowdown, like a, a intentional slow-mo shot, but the effects are great. The underwater stuff is amazing. There's this thing where they go to this place called the Trench, and there are these creatures in there, and they look incredible. It's seriously, it's a visual masterpiece. I'm not saying it's a masterpiece in terms of every piece of filmmaking, but man, it is visually cool, and it looks awesome. I This movie could have been made 10 years ago. I'm glad we had to wait for Aquaman and Wonder Woman and stuff like this because the technology has now reached a point where there's no real uncanny valley issues. And even if he wears the traditional golden green armor, it looks cool. Like you thought Aquaman would look lame. He looks cool. He looks majestic. Jason Momoa kicked ass in this whole movie. Like seriously, he is one of the best actors to portray a superhero in a long time. He's up there with Chris Hemsworth Thor in terms of coolness in terms of nobility, he doesn't want to be a hero, but he has to be. And it's just a really good story. Chris Wicks, thank you very much. Uh, spoiler, the Dr. Elsa I sent with January unboxing. <laughs> hey, one more is fine. Uh, we'll have a Dr. Elsa Schneider team. Uh, let's see, Metalhead Zaki, I hope you heard what I was just saying about Aquaman. So there we go. Um, that's okay if you missed the stream, but I do recommend that everyone go back and watch it. This one will not appear on Podbean because it's mostly a visual podcast. So there's really not much to listen to. You got to check it out. I showed every single thing that we received from the P.O. Box. And goddamn Salvador, holy shit. Everybody, holy shit. Um, I'm, I'm just going to have so much fun reorganizing this office with new collectibles and new things. Like Godzilla's got to go up. Han Solo's have got to go up. All kinds of stuff has got to go up. I got some Beverly Hills Cop stuff. You name it. If I like it on this channel, it's been sent to us. And I uh, loved everything. And that card game is going to be played as well. Keyforge. We're going to have some fun with that. Now I have to watch him in Game of Thrones. Shit. Well, Dion approves of Game of Thrones. Maybe I'll give it a shot. Uh, let's see. Please do watch Venom. I watched it earlier today and really liked it. It's no masterpiece, but very entertaining. I'm open-minded to give it a shot. Uh, Aquaman has put me in a much better place for Shazam, and you guys already heard me say I'm excited for Shazam. When there is competition and you are down, you are not number one, you have to do everything in your power to find what works. And DC is there right now. I firmly believe that DC cannot make the same mistakes that Marvel could make by being in number one, letting their ego get in place. DC delivered a very traditional Hero's Journey, 
very, very predictable in moments, but it doesn't take away from the fun. And um, the ending and the beginning are mirrored perfectly into a really feel good moment that if you, I mean, if you find it hokey, eh, but you should definitely smile from it. That ending, like the legitimate last few frames, oh, not the last few frames, but the last couple of moments of the movie are awesome. And there's like, you know how in Spider-Man there's the final swing? Aquaman has like a final moment type of thing, I think. But then there's a moment with um, Tamara Morrison again, and it's really cool. It's a nice bookend to the movie. So uh, everybody brings their A game. The design was on point, especially everyone in Atlantis, everyone in the other kingdoms. Dolph Lundgren is a real fucking actor in this movie. Holy shit, was he awesome. I loved it. Like, I was like, I looked at it, and I'm like, oh, Dolph Lundgren's going to fuck this up. This movie needs to be a hit. No, Dolph Lundgren was awesome. So if you love Ivan Drago, Dolph Lundgren, now this is more of a Dr. Dolph Lundgren. Like He really brought it. I want to see Dolph Lundgren have a career resurgence because of Aquaman. He was that damn good. Uh, Metalhead Zaki says, I just got back from Bumblebee and I can say that the movie was amazing and subverted my expectations after the Bayverse. Now I hope you and the world-class bullshitters can check it out. Anything's possible, man. Uh, we'll do Venom first because that's more in our wheelhouse of uh, comic books. But maybe we'll check out Bumblebee. Maybe I'll catch it on a Tuesday for five bucks, you know, if I got some time. I like the designs of the Transformers. When I saw that trailer, I, I said, you know, I gave it high praise in terms of the visuals and the design category. So maybe, but I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. That's the thing that we really fight for on the channel is entertainment. No matter if it's everybody's cup of tea, like last year, the last Jedi was such an adversarial mean spirited piece of entertainment that brought on a whole year of negativity lumped on fans that didn't enjoy it. And you had critics and assholes come out of the woodwork to lambast you because I didn't like a movie. And then you got people playing the victim card. I like the movie. All I did was like a movie. And I've been bullied out of community. No, you're an asshole and you were caught on your shit. That's why people push back JC, not because you liked solo solo was better than the last Jedi. I think I gave it a five. It was just okay. It doesn't make my worst of the year list. It doesn't make my best of the year, year list. It just kind of lingers there. It's forgettable, much like it deserves to be. Uh, Clone Commander Jeremy says, my favorite Christmas present will be stealing solo. It might not be here at Christmas, but it'll be worth the wait. Um, Clone Commander Jeremy, I don't know if you're in the beginning of the stream, but I did show that I've been boxing up the, um, whatchamacallits, the early bird certificates. Those are being boxed up. I got them. I got... 1500 envelopes so i dried my hands out i know that sounds like a first world problem but i'm sitting here on saturday you know putting them in i was watching a documentary on playstation stuff and envelopes and then my hands dried out and i was cut i was like ah, i gotta take a break and then i started drawing again but uh yeah it's everything is in production i thank you guys again seriously uh you made a dream come true with that comic book being a huge success it's funny i i'm one of those people like i'll write a goal down and years ago, I wrote down on a piece of paper, which is hung up on my wall. Now it's covered by a desk. But I said, all your donation requests or have been successful, meaning you're funding for a book. And I did it, and it happened. And it just emboldened me. I was like, yes, it worked. So maybe I can have a Sally Field moment, which I'm not, because I'm not going to cry. But it was an awesome achievement. And yes, it was my birthday. But I won't remember 30 for the party or all that other stuff. I'll remember that it was the first time my published work got funded in a huge way by thousands of people who really want to read what I have to write and who I hope come back for the next story and the story after that. And we can keep this thing rolling. Look, comic books are a dying medium to some, but they're the great American art form to other. And like me, um, I want to see them succeed like a lot of you do. So we'll make that happen in 2019. Uh, maybe it'll be a little shorter because stealing solo is kind of a long story, but it's coming along so great. I don't care. As long as you guys enjoy it, uh, we'll be nice and long and meaty stories. Oh, let's see. There was no traces of soy humor in politics and Bumblebee was full of testosterone all the way till the end. Good. That's the kind. Honestly, I know that sounds hokey to say, oh, I don't want any soy in my movies, but modern politics just don't work, especially in a 1987 setting. So I'm glad that it doesn't have those things. I really, really uh, don't want that in a movie. And, you know, if you make something your own property and you put that in there, okay, fine. That's what your story is based on. But when you take stuff that people like for other reasons and you try to blend it with that to be a more relevant movie, remember, you're in fucking fantasy. When a car can turn into a robot and be sentient, then I'll buy into your crap. But until that happens today in today's world, keep it out, man. Keep it out. If you're going to cry, do 
feel like Monday night. You really like me? Uh, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I haven't had a chance to check out the Star Wars Vader film theory. I'm going to do that next year. I know that sounds like a long time away, but it's really just what, like a week. I'm going to do that uh, in 2019 with our friend Sketch Therapy. He's going to work together with me, and he's going to help us get the Star Wars fan films. It'll be like on a Saturday or something. We'll do a couple of those. We'll talk. Maybe I'll try to get Star Wars theory on to discuss his film with all of us. That'd be a lot of fun. You heard it here first, folks. I'm doing it in the High Council community first. Yeah, Dr. Coffin Nails, we had you and I are very similar. Uh, if you ever make it back to Horror Hound, we will be there. We'll be at the one in Cincinnati, but obviously you don't want to make the drive because you got a family. But if you make it back to the Indianapolis one, which we'll go to, uh, you know, find us and shoot the shit with us, man. Be like super fan Adam Shawhan. Come hang out behind the table with us, you know, shoot the shit. I love it. Jonathan Hurst, thank you very much again. Sorry about all the else's, Jeff. I never would have expected anyone to have the same idea. The Florence Kentucky Toys R Us was awesome. Merry Christmas. You are, yeah, you and I need to get together and shoot the shit one day, seriously. And don't uh, apologize about all the else's, Jonathan Hurst. You were the first uh, Dr. Elsa Schneider I opened up. Because I keep these all closed, so I get, you know, oh my god, I got this and that, and I don't move anything or, you know, lose track of it. But the letter, dude, on the fucking Indiana Jones-style college letterhead... I'm going to put that up. All your letters and stuff are going to be put in a box. Um, I might have my mom do like one of those weird shadow box things, but I got to frame yours because I fucking uh, I love those. And a dude years ago, a friend of mine named Dustin, not the place to be on the show, wrote me a letter like from Back to the Future. We were at a B-dubs and he was like writing a letter about wrestling, but he wrote it like Doc Brown. I still have that in a drawer. You know, stuff like that is really cool to me. It's, it, it sounds hokey, but like when people write the letters with it, I really like that. Um, you know, it's, it's fun. It's really fun. Clone Commander Jeremy, thank you very much. Yeah, when I get the silver play button this coming year, I'll be ecstatic. It's going to go up on the wall. I'm shooting for a gold, though, by the end of next year. I got some really awesome stuff. And this year was a nice building year. Next year is where we blow up even bigger. I mean, congratulations to Jeremy and Ethan and all their success. Um, we had success on just as big a scale. And I want to blow my channel out of the water next year with even more, more, more success. Uh, going to go some places, film some things. Go is the channel. Go meet Cecil. All that great stuff. Yeah, like Cecil and I have a, uh, a meetup plan. We're going to go. I'm going to take Cecil to dinner because you guys are awesome. And, you know, I'm going to interview Cecil audio wise. That way, because, you know, he's got to keep his identity secret. But that way we can talk and just have some fun. Um. Yeah, Back to the Future is still my favorite movie too, Jonathan. It, it can't be replaced. Every time I think about something else, I look back to Back to the Future and I go, no, nope, it's Back to the Future. It's just so perfect. And the people that made it really, really, really care about it. And Robert Zemeckis made a stinker this past weekend with what? Mel Welcome to Marwin, that Steve Carell movie. That's a flop. And one thing I want to make a note of before we close out is um, Black Panther and Aquaman. So Black Panther is sitting at a 97% on Rotten Tomatoes with a 79% liked it from the audience. Now Aquaman is sitting at a much lower 64%, but 85% of the audience liked it. So it seems like Aquaman is a hit with the fans, not so much the critics. Not saying that's Disney money paying them off, but it does play into next year when we talk about um, more of this culture war with fans and critics and stuff like that. The critics have a certain agenda the fans want to be entertained. The fans don't have an agenda. We just want to like what we like and have a good time. So if you like that kind of entertainment, I'm going to be giving you that. We're going back to some heavy hitting videos. We got to get um, we got to get out there more. And our, one of our buddies from a long time ago is going to make an appearance here on the channel soon. Not personally, but in another video where we talk about his contributions, in quotations, to the world of entertainment reporting. Am I still friends with Dustin? Like the real Dustin from the show? Yeah. I didn't have a falling out. He just couldn't make it to the channel anymore. So we asked Kendo and Kendo replaced him and Kendo has been an excellent uh, replacement. I, I honestly, I'm not trying to, you know, toot his own horn or toot his horn, but I don't really think of the world-class bullshitters as being the proper show without him. Like the old episodes are fun. And a lot of our friends like, like Seth Scott and uh, Jason and all those guys like to listen to the old episodes and laugh at some of the shit. And you guys can check it out too. But uh, I don't think the podcast proper really hit right until we got Kendo on board because we're all four guys with a goal. You know, we all like entertainment. We want to see it pure and 
not really full of soy to use that phrase, but we're unintentionally a diverse podcast. I see, see nobody on the channel dislikes people of color because sadly we fall into that category and not because we want to be white, but because we're used as shields and that kind of stuff annoys us. You know, Dion will talk shit about Black Panther all day. Spoiler alert, he's the black dude and the icon in the orange background. Uh, Nick, maybe a Samoan, maybe an Indian, who knows? Again, uh, we'll call bullshit on any uh, talk about representation. And me, a mix of many other things, will also do the same. We just want good entertainment. And, um, you know, Kendo really just was a great addition to the show. I couldn't ask for a better co-host. Any of these guys are awesome. That's why we're best friends. We travel together. We do all this great stuff. And in 2019, I want to get the channel. My goal, honestly, end goal is to make this channel so big because we're our brand and we're going to release website. I have a website with merchandise and all this crap. It just takes forever for me to get one thing done, then the next, then the next. But next year, we want to basically get the channel to a point where we can all go across the country, do shows, become a bigger brand. I feel like the four of us have a really good take on everything. And, you know, hashtag Party Boob is going to be our album. So I got to give a shout out to, I think it was the Grand Inquisitor that told us about Party Boob. And I'm not going to get rid of that. Have I met anyone that dislikes Back to the Future? Uh, not honestly. They usually talk shit to try to rile me up, but that's fine. It doesn't bother me. I mean, it's fine if you didn't like Aquaman. It doesn't bother me. I thought it was great. I'm finally able to watch something that's not from Marvel that doesn't have a laugh every five seconds. There were some jokes, but it wasn't overtly funny. Like, that's the number one thing I'm getting really fed up with is the fucking jokes. Endgame better be serious as shit. It better have, it better not be Paul Rudd every three seconds. Can I have some orange slices? As much as I like Paul Rudd, I thought that was a little out of place in Civil War. I hope Spider Man's not in a good chunk of this fucking movie either. I am so over. Uh, overly quippy Spider-Man. The game does it right, and I think Spider-Man's internal monologue is important. Maybe we bring that back. Maybe we use that in Spider-Man Far From Home. That would be nice. It'd be a nice change of pace. Uh, you met someone who hates Back to the Future 3. I don't really like Back to the Future 3. When I say I love Back to the Future, I just mean the first 1985 film. If you enjoy the other two, more power to you. I used to like number two the best because it took place on my birthday. But I don't think it has the same weight emotionally it's not groundbreaking. It's just not as funny or I don't want to say well-made because it's not a fair assessment. It's actually uh, just as well-made of a film and the artistry and the technical work is second to none for its time. I mean, it's one of the best looking movies of 1989 and I don't want to take that away. Plus so much of the back to the future mythology is built on the hoverboard and the flying DeLorean and, you know, Biff doing multiple things in different timelines. You know, so much that came from that was from number two. So I don't really want to dump on it, but my top five favorite movies, Back to the Future, is number one, and it's just the first one. It's not the franchise, like Star Wars. I love Empire Strikes Back as much as everyone there out there, but uh, A New Hope is where it's at for me. And Beverly Hills Cop, it's only the first one. Die Hard, again, it's only the first one. We're not doing you know, franchises when I talk about that. Now, Indiana Jones is a little different because I like the original three so much that I can lump them together because, I, I mean, it sounds biased as shit, but they're all 10 out of 10 movies for me. I wouldn't change anything. They make me happy. They're well-made. They're well-acted. They look great. All 10 out of 10s for that trilogy, and I just put Indiana Jones. It's just a whole thing uh, to, to tell you more about my thought process of movies. Oh, man. So is there anything else you guys want to ask me for the year? This might be the last time you get to talk to me for quite some time. So uh, shoot me your questions now or forever, as in for the rest of this year, hold your peace. Say hi to your mom. You gl I gladly will, uh, action figure expert. Uh, let's see. I'd love to see you get together with Gary of Nerd Rotic and shoot shit about comic books. He's a patron of yours too. Uh, Kato Roan, uh, Gary of Nerd Rotic channel. Sure. I would love to have him on. Um, Gary of Nerd Rotic channel, if you're listening to this right now, or if somebody tells you about it, you are more than welcome to come on the channel. I need to be more structured in the new year, but I will make a night where you come on and we'll hang out. We'll talk about comics. We'll have people ask us questions and we'll shoot the shit, man. I am all about that. I love talking comics. Uh, sometimes I like to go even deeper than Ethan would normally. It's like, oh man, you know, this inker on this book really added to John Buscell and, you know, just stuff that Ethan would agree with, but doesn't have too much of an opinion on type of thing. So that's always fun too. 
a uh, bit off topic, but then Star Wars talk reminded me. Have you seen that Obi-Wan has PTSD, uh, PTSD video? I have not. I'll have to check that out. Is that from, from Geeks and Gamers? If it is, I will check them out. Let's see. War Eagle Jeremy, a.k.a. Edward Coleman, says, Greatest trilogy of all time. Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Back to the Future, of course, not counting some of the Indiana Jones films. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Uh, I, I agree with your trilogies list. Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and Back to the Future are the three best trilogies to me. If I had to throw other trilogies up there, the Dollars trilogy is damn fine. Um, what else is a trilogy that's good? The Dark Knight trilogy is awesome. If Spider-Man 3 didn't suck, I'd throw the Spider-Man trilogy up there too. But uh, alas, it's not that great. But there are worse Spider-Man films. Uh, let's see. Can you wish all your family a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us? Sure, Sketch Therapy. I can do that for you. I mean, not everyone in my family deserves to be wished Merry Christmas from Sketch Therapy. But uh, I can do that from everybody. Yeah, I can do that. I just, the funny thing is everyone in my, no one in my family really knows what I do. They assume I don't do anything, but um, I don't really want to brag to them. I really don't, I don't do it for them. I do it for all you guys. I do it because I enjoy it. So I'll wish them a Merry Christmas. I'll do all that stuff. I'm, I'm a really festive guy. I'm happy it's Christmas. I love the holiday. Uh, but you know, it's funny. Yesterday I was talking to my mom because uh, she went out to lunch with one of her friends and I got back, she was talking about Christmas. I said, you know what, Mom? I'm excited for Christmas and New Year's, but I'm really excited to get back on track with the channel in a new way. And she's like, well, honey, I can tell you really love what you do. So eh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Try, <laughs> imagine if the Luke, if holiday special with Star Wars trilogy, or sequel trilogy characters. Well, Mutale, if they did that, it would be like, uh, was that YouTube Rewind 2018, where they're all sitting around a fireplace and they just talk about representation of holidays and they would say Christmas last or they wouldn't mention Christmas. I'm like, I get it. I get it. Ha, fuck Christmas. Like, yeah, Christmas is great for everybody. And if you don't celebrate it, there's nothing wrong with you and I'm not putting you down, but you know, let people that enjoy it enjoy it. The internet's too cynical at times about Christmas. I don't know many people that are shitheads on Christmas. Even Scrooge uh, wisened up on Christmas Day. I like Back to the Future 3. It helps me think fourth dimensionally. Is it weird that I say fourth dimensionally all the time? Because my mom was talking about something. I was like, yeah, fourth dimensionally. And she goes, what? And I, just, I ignored it. I just left it like that. <laughs> I did see the new Men in Black trailer. Uh, we talked about that on the podcast, guys. So if you want to hear everyone's thoughts. Uh, not a fan. It's nothing to do with her or Chris Hemsworth. It's just the fact that Men in Black is a Will Smith franchise. And you took away that style and the story was over and oh we're gonna do it internationally wouldn't you want to be so covert that there aren't like your operations are there they're making it too much like kingsman it's like kingsman meets science fiction and uh good for you guys at um whatchamacallit uh sony uh you have another middling flop on the way stop take look at they're taking the shitty disney approach where they don't make anything new they just take something that they either already own or somebody else's work and they buy it up and they try to just milk it until it's dry. Men in Black 3 was fun. It ended on a great note. Men in Black is dead. It started in 97. It ended in 2011, or was it 2012? Whenever number three came out. Uh, let's let's put it to rest. Men in Black is Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. No more, no less. I find the holiday special better than The Last Jedi. Yeah, I do too. If somebody asks me which one I'd rather watch, it's going to be holiday special. Do they think you just sleep and drink all day? Uh, probably. They have no clue what's going on. But uh, I don't, like I said, I don't really worry about what my family thinks. One person matters. My mom. She knows what's up. Uh, she knows how hard I work. She sees the success. So uh, she's proud. That's it for me. Hey Jeff, me and a friend are planning on a Christmas movie binge watch party, and Die Hard is on our first on our list. Any movies you can recommend? Well, Metalhead Zacky, yesterday I started watching some Christmas movies back to back to back to back. So, if you'd like my recommendations list, here they are. Obviously, Die Hard. I'd throw in Home Alone 1 and 2. Uh, Christmas Story. Christmas Vacation. Bad Santa. Christmas with the Cranks is a little fun. Uh, Trading Places. I don't think you can get all those in today. What else do I have? I don't really own too many Christmas movies, but those are on my list. All of those are recommendations. And if you're desperate, watch Die Hard 2. Die Harder. It's not that great, but it's not that bad either. It's second to worst Die Hard movie. But uh, better than than most movies you'll watch. Grand Inquisitor says, Jeff, hey, Jeff, party boob! Party boob is correct. You know, uh, Grand Inquisitor, when I picked up Dan to go see Aquaman, that was the first thing we started talking about. 
and he laughed. And then I was thinking about um, the album cover, and I think it's either going to be a really weird drawing in like neon colors. It's his party boob, or it's just going to be a really nice rack with hashtag party boob written on a woman's chest. I'm going with that one, I think, in my head now that I say it out loud. But party boob, I will give you a shout out on the album. <laughs> oh shit. Scrooge. Yeah, I forgot Scrooge. I'd put that up high on the list above the Home Alone movies as well as Krampus. But don't, ooh, Krampus Returns was terrible. I tried watching that the other day on Hulu. I turned it off because it was dog shit. But the real Krampus movie was damn fine. Gremlins as well. And Men in Black 3 was 2012. Okay. So now we know. Uh, same year as the Avengers. God, man. I, I know I shit on Disney and MCU at times. Still best theater going experience in my life. What I think of the Hellboy trailer? Didn't like it. Uh, the suit or the makeup or whatever looks like cosplay. Like, why are they redoing it? I know Mike Mignola is going to praise it and stuff like that because, you know, he'll get a cut of the box office. So I can't say anything bad about that. But as a fan, somebody that liked Hellboy, I mean, liked in the past, uh, eh, I won't see it. I'm really not too concerned with it. Uh, Sith Lord Luke Skywalker says, Did you get my crap yet? Uh, no. I went to the P.O. box on Saturday. And if it wasn't there, uh, I will go back in the new year and pick it up. It'll be fun. Um, like I said, I got everything open that was sent to me. I've had it stacked up downstairs. And again, shout out and a thank you to everybody. I mean it. You guys, uh, you always talk about thanks for doing what we do here on the channel. Thank you for doing what you do. Uh, we feel, um, what's the right word? I don't want to say, no, enthused isn't the right word. We feel accomplished, you know, that everyone is so involved and so grateful that everyone's so loyal to what we do and you guys make it you know so much fun so i think that's the right way to close this out so guys thank you for watching good morning pop culture it's been a hell of a year it started in july so while we're gone away from the channel if you're hungry for more world-class bullshitters content there are like thousands of hours worth of content that you haven't checked out yet so yes good morning pop culture is always topical maybe it's a little dated but you know what? It's a lot of fun. So if you're looking for stuff to watch, check that out. I got tons and tons of videos to go out and check out the Forbes video. Once that hits 50,000, I can finally do the, the reply, the retort, whatever you want to call it. And it's only about like a thousand views away from that. So let's make that happen. And I'll come back with a vengeance next year. I've taken down shills. I'm bringing you guys the best, most honest take I can give you on every topic. World Class Bullshitters is not a bought and paid for podcast. It's run by us, and it's really fueled by the people. So if you guys want to have your voices heard, get involved with this community. Our Facebook page, join the private group. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we have a lot of great people on there that want to talk about entertainment. And if you guys are looking for a new community to get involved with, if you're listening to this, you're probably involved. But if you're one of the few people who are checking this out because you saw Christmas gifts and Aquaman and you're curious to what it was, I hope you had a good time. I hope you check out all of our other videos. And I hope that everyone comes back refreshed from a Christmas break. So if you're like Salvador out there who's got to work all through the holidays, man, more power to you. People like you keep the shit running when everybody else has taken a holiday break. But to everyone else out there, too, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, filthy animals, and as always, be excellent to each other.